I'm when in Proton, I'm always the first in the office. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh. You you are paid to come on time. Yep. So I'm not again. Can I buy lah? True. Actually, negotiate to open eleven petrol station petrolers in Cambodia. I was supposed to kill this company. Now I'm supposed to sell. <laughs> <laughs> wow. As you can see today, you can ask. Sapa father of my V? In India. Yeah. yeah. Always give your best in what you do. Nothing come easy in life. With success come a lot of failures. I've failed a lot of my time. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Nama saya Ashraf Khalid dan bersama saya Ishraq Kamaruddin. Selamat kembali ke Apa Cerita Podcast di mana kita mendengar kisah-kisah inspirasi daripada individu yang berjaya untuk dijadikan sebagai tauladan dan inspirasi. Yes. So hari ini adalah episod kedua kita di Apa Cerita untuk The CEO Series. Ha, kalau sebelum ni kita ada The Founder Series and today kita Uh, after the first episode with Riyad Today Kita ada the second episode Untuk the CEO series And tetamu kita hari ini Adalah seorang ahli korporat Yang tersohor Yes, yes I sir. feel so honored And honestly A little bit nervous Sebab guest kita ni Bukan calang-calang orang Yep, yep And maybe you want to do the honor To formally introduce our guest What? Yes, up. I pun actually to be honest A bit nervous as well But before we start Um, we like to request from our viewers and also subscribers eh, to help subscribe. Yeah. Oh, that, we, I assume you guys are subscribers already. Yeah, <laughs> yang mana subscriber, thank you. Yang mana tak subscribe, please do subscribe. Please. Yeah. Kalau nak cantik wangi, please do subscribe. <laughs> okay, so bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Bermula kerjaya beliau sebagai seorang project engineer di Petronas dan rise through the ranks through various companies sehingga menjadi CEO ataupun leadership role untuk syarikat-syarikat yang tidak asing lagi di khalayak ramai iaitu Pro2, Proton, Petronas, Triple P man. Triple P. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard great stories from my ex-boss Ashraf about our special guest today. Yeah. As he used to serve our guest today back then in Proton. Hmm. Many learnings and influence towards developing Riyad Asmat as a leader as he is today. Kira dia adalah boss kepada boss. Oh, <laughs> level lain lah. Ni. Kalau dulu so, kita ada sifu kepada sifu yeah. ni boss kepada boss. Eh? So <laughs> memang boss lah. <laughs> Alright. So without further ado, it is my great honor to introduce our special guest today, Executive Chairman of Dagang Next Change Berhad. Better known as Dinex, Dinex. Tan, Tan Sri Syed Zainal, Zainal Abidin. Abidin. All right, so thank you so much, Tan Sri, for being here. Thank, thank you, Tan Sri. Thank you, Shroud. Yeah. Thank yeah. you very much for inviting me. Yeah. yeah. So sekarang kita dah boleh dengar eh, suara radio Tan Sri. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Tadi kalau Tan Sri tengok masa what buat the intro tu, he tried to give a radio voice, but I think yeah. he <laughs> has to learn more from you lah. Correct. Uh, it, will, it will come naturally. <laughs> <laughs> As a start, I'm already learning something now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dan Sri, for spending your time here with us. Yeah, most welcome. And we really appreciate, especially you as a busy man. Tak boleh lah. Bila Ashraf panggil, tak kena kata no pula kan. Thank you so much. Okay. Yeah. So, do you know, Ab, that actually, Dan Sri, you, you used to be, a, you started your career as an engineer and have a background of an engineer, right? That's right. Engineering. So, and top 500 companies, uh, top Fortune 500 company, In the world, hmm. most of them are back with the background of engineering, right? The CEOs. Yeah, yeah. La- Larry Page, the yeah, yeah. CEO. That's... Tim Cook from Apple. Bezos. Amazon, yeah, Jeff Bezos. So I'm pretty sure today we will learn so much from uh, Tan Sri and also for the viewers too. You guys want to stick around because I believe there's a lot of things that we can benefit yeah. today. InsyaAllah. InsyaAllah. Semoga bermanfaat. Yes. Ni kira level-level Steve Jobs Malaysia bro. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All, All right. right. So Tan Sri, I think uh, the first one yang kita nak nak tanya kan, uh, of course uh, most people know Tan Sri as a corporate leader. <coughs> you have le- you led companies like Proton, Produa, Petronas Dagang, now Dinex and a few others. But I'm also curious to know about your family background. <coughs> kan, macam mana Tan Sri dibesarkan 
and how it contributed to your success maybe a bit about your parents you know how they were adakah dia orang ni memang tak sri lahir-lahir dah senang ke ataupun how was your parents uh, masa kecil dulu yeah, okay and a good question okay yeah. bismillahirrahmanirrahim assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh thank you very much ashraf uh, isra and the viewers of our chapter uh, thank you for inviting me uh, i think it's also an honor for me to be you know in the new podcast lah i think i've little bit known about papa cheta you have gained a lot of popularity alhamdulillah i think what you're doing is very good to reach out to the to the viewers i think not many people know about my background lah ashraf ashraf i'm asal and i say i'm asal from kelantan everybody got surprised Oh, I'm oh. born in Kota Baru Kelantan. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> surprised too, yeah. Selang tak ada people yeah. always thought I'm from Penang and that. I'm, I was born in Kota Baru Kelantan uh, in 1962. Um I think my childhood kind of influence where I am today lah, you know. Uh, I was just born and raised. I was in Kelantan until I'm set at 2. So at that point of time, my father was always in government servant. Uh, and my, my father has a very humble beginning. I don't want to go to the you know, I'm not born in civil practice. He worked very hard. He started his career as only as a clerk at the uh, Jabatan Pengangkutan Jalan. Oh. Masa itu, RTD, Road Transport Department. In Kelantan? In Kelantan. In Kelantan. And of course, I married with my mom. And we live in a very, you know, wooden house in the city. But we shared with three other families. Lah. And my, it's my grandmother's house, actually. Uh, uh, and the three other families and we have a common living room I used to share a bicycle we walk to school so after at um, on you know after finishing Senate 2 my town father can transfer to Johor so oh, from at, up north down uh, to down south north south <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 it was yeah. an opportunity yes. you know in GPG ni, in the Islandu transfer they move people around So he got transferred to Jubaru. So oh, me and the time and my sister, three of my sisters lah. The, I mean, three of the us uh, was were around. Then we had to relocate ourselves. So at a very young age, you know, my sister kerja tiga ni close about what nine Ten, years old, right? Yeah, nine, years, yep. nine years old. So I transferred to Johor. So I started and start, uh, did my kerja tiga, senior three, senior four, senior five. Um, masa Senate 5 dulu I think uh, There was uh, An exam lah It took in Senate 5 lah. Sekarang ni uh, Senate, In Senate 6 yeah. At that time was Senate 5 So we learned I was about to You know kata, Get used to Being in Johor New friends Then poop again Kena transfer Transfer balik. again wow. Kupinang oh. <laughs> North <laughs> South Back Then to back North, to north. <laughs> So they cover the whole oh, I mean, <laughs> Okay lah I said okay lah dah, You know the Father had to transfer He got lah he, Alhamdulillah He got a promotion Then he went to, to Penang So I went to Penang And entered Center 6 And that's where I suppose I really grew up lah Center 6 mm. sampai lah uh, Form 5 When I went to Penang Free School Mm. So I grew up in a very unique environment, you know, and the fact that you move from one city to the other at a very young age, you have to you have to adjust, acclimatize, yeah. have new friends. It kind of builds your resilience in your character, yeah. you know, and adaptability is something that I learned from the very beginning. Kecik kecik kan, macam macam mana lagi dia tahu kawan baru, bantuan baru, tengok where where are your friends, you know. Yeah. So I don't really have a childhood friend to speak when I learn from when I when I grew up together from mm. kecik sampai lah sekarang. Yeah. So it's a mix of people. Then from Kelantan, very you know, when I get the Conservative, masa tu conservative sikit lah. Mm-hmm. Johor, you know, gateway to Singapore. Wah, opening sikit Open. pergi Singapore. Yeah. Masa tu, ringgit, one ringgit to one dollar. <laughs> <laughs> Singapore dollar kan. Yeah, 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 Then suddenly go to Penang. Yeah. You know, a Chinese-based, you know, uh, community. So I have a very mixed, you know, environment mm. that kind of forms my culture lah. So I was born in Gutenbaru. Mm. I got five siblings. I'm the only boy in out of the five, all our oh. sisters. So being the only boy, so we talk about pressure, skill, lah. Yeah, lah. <laughs> pressure to perform, and the fact that you know when you're only boy, you don't have friends in the family. So my friends are my, uh, my you know, company are my friends outside, lah. Mm. Tapi ada ada brother, and then you gonna hang out yeah, together, yeah, no? Yeah. yeah. So I spend a lot of time outside. You are number one. No, number two. Oh, number two. <laughs> number two. Abang. Uh. Yeah. So and my mom is just a simple housewife from the beginning mm-hmm. until today. And my dad, as I said, started as a clerk. Uh, and then he, you know, when we were Penang, he was the director of GPG oh, in wow. Penang. Wow, he really yeah. worked hard, worked his and way. He, he really worked hard, you know, and I've seen him provide for the family, mm. you know, and, you know, and even today, lah, 
you know, he's still, you know, Alhamdulillah, he's still around. He's about 87 years old, sihat, you know. Yeah, I'm still lucky both my parents are around. Yeah. So that, you know, years of me, you know, shooting for one another really shapes me <coughs> when I am today. A few things that I want, I want just one more When I'm an, I, I become very adaptable. Yep. Mm. You know, then with today, you know, I, I can adapt to environment quite easily. Okay. Uh, uh, other companies, you know, the world that we operate, you know. Uh, no, number two, making friends is something that I, I natural I, I become natural lah. Yeah. Because you're not alone, kan? Because you're alone, then you get isolated, kan? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, so I, I I do you know have that easy for me. So the people skills, something that I've learned quite quickly. And third is about you know respecting uh, opinions of communities that works around you lah. You know, when they're on Kelantan, on Johor, Penang, Chinese, Kelantan, and all that. Mungkin a bit more conservative. Dekat Penang, mungkin a bit more. Oh, open, very open lah. Ha. Macam tu Penang kan. I mean, I I was uh, probably in my uh, class for science one, five science one. I was like only three, four Malays. Oh, no. no, that's not Chinese. Mm. So I learn how, how the Chinese work. I learn how you know how they think. You know, mm. oh, free school, school, eh? I mean, yeah. free school, eh? Uh, your friend, mula mula pun first Chinese, one, Chinese juga. Wow. Lah. <laughs> <laughs> Ini Russia sikit lah. Tak ramai orang tahu kan? Itu dulu dulu lah. <laughs> but but it's uh, it's something that I learned. And today I'm proud to say you know. And this was what the uh, 19 maybe what, 77. Mm. Until today, yeah. they are still my friends. We mm. we get together oh. quite often. The Chi- Chinese girlfriends still. Yeah, that's all. But both the Malays <laughs> and the Malay friends and the Chinese friend, and we are close. So you talk talking about forty years of friendship. friendship. Mm. That's a very long time. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm happy. I'm you know, and they don't care whether I'm a Tansi or so. Mm. As when we meet, we high cool. Yeah. yeah, we blend. So I'm I'm blessed. I'm blessed to have a very colorful exposure. Mm. Uh, Diverse and I'm happy. background. Eh? Yeah, I'm background. And I think that along the way kind of shapes like, you know, I couldn't imagine if I just stay in Glantan for, mm. until I'm from five again. Yeah. I, I think I would probably be a different person. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, nothing to do with Glantan, even I've stayed in Glantan. <laughs> but I, when I mix around, then I get that. And that helps frame me to go for my next journey in life, which is yeah. to US lah. Mm. Uh, so the kita dah, you know, macam-macam Tuhan dah atur kan, okay, you build yeah. the resilient, build the building block, mm, yeah. because the next phase is going to be more challenging kan. Yeah. So, Tapi Angka punya Kelantan route tu, I think sampai sekarang pun masih lagi, sebab sekarang oh. kan, Tan Sri masih dekat, apa, selalu pergi masjid. Itu uh, <laughs> nak dapat daripada na, sana. Nak na, tahu Kelantan lah Kelantan, put a Kelantan next to me, <laughs> and the Kelantan will come out. <laughs> Very quickly. But yeah. still, you, you I, can, you have the... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I speak Clandonese wow. at home. I, and I go back to Kota Baru every three months. Uh, oh. I go see my relatives there, my uncle, wow. my aunties, my cousins. But your kids boleh cakap Clandon? Uh, not me, not, not me. They, they can understand lah, you know. Mm. But no, no. They, don't they, they sampai kat ibu. <laughs> <you> know, <laughs> lah. <laughs> Alright, yep. so Tan Sri, ada tak any cerita daripada zaman Tan Sri kecil dulu? Any significant, uh, significant moment that happened in your childhood that you still remember hai, sampai hari ni? Mungkin kisah <laughs> dengan your dad ke? Yeah. Wow. Kan? Um, I mean, that's a, that's a few lah. You know, it's fact that you've been from different different school kan. Mm. Every school had the experience diri lah. In Penang, you know, Penang Free School, being the only boy and, you know, and I'm quite an active person and I play sports. But one of the things that I can that also builds my character, I was involved in scouts, scouting. Oh, sea scout, scout, boy yeah. scout. Okay. Uh, I mean, boy scout. The same no, land but scout, sea right? scout. Oh, sea scout. Sea scout. Yeah, the the land scout. Yeah, oh, yeah. Sea scout. Sea scout. Can you put it lah? Like a dummy, like sailor, kan? Like navy, kan? Navy. Yeah. Can you put it? Sekarang tak ada dah. Not ready. So I was active in sea scout, and as a sea scout, and you you need to take a few tests, and. Um, and we aim to take uh, the ultimate is to become a king scout lah. King mm-hmm. scout means we have to do. So you have to do a test. So I remember I went to I was one of the tests is you go do hiking. You must there's four of you stay in in an, in a deserted beach. You want to another There's no access except you have to hike for two two hours. Mm-hmm. Stay there for days three night. You tell about what but what basic food lah tapi mm. pinggan mangkuk kuali semua tak boleh bawa mm. but you kena dia bagi dia lah bagi you beras bagi you sardine yeah. that. you have to figure out how to kick on your own mm. to, like to survival bangu, yeah. really survival mm. this And was at the age of I was at like, what age of um, 16 17 16 17 mm. 
Uh, but I mean to me I, I don't think kids today go to that lah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> kita kalau dah pergi camping mana duduk oh, nice care <laughs> rumah yeah, dia yeah. kan tempat camp, camp Sri, camping orang buat sendiri yeah, tempat, <laughs> tempat Puan Sri Tiara punya tempat <laughs> yeah. glamping yeah, glamping, <laughs> glamping. glamping. Yeah. glamping yeah. Yeah. but that really that scouting experience to me was really, it's about discipline yeah. uh, uh, about I know how to survive in all odds Yeah. environment you know so uh, i think those are the two things you know in, in my mind that can shapes lah you know yeah uh, yeah so That's i think it. yeah i think macam today pun kita boleh nampak lah tan sri punya level of discipline usually correct uh, i tengok lah tan sri orang yang berjaya ni kan they are always earlier than time yes and they always like morning punya orang kan So I think mungkin benda tu pun Tansri dapat daripada masa oh, kecil yeah. dulu. Oh yeah, very true. I mean, yeah. over the years, you know lah, success to to some sex, you need to have discipline lah. Yeah. Tak ada discipline, you know, susah. True. I mean, kita ni yang suka bawang pagi kan. Yeah. Yang subuh, then... Yalah, you start but, your day lah. Uh, start the start day. Lah, terus. And, I, and you're right, I'm an important, I'm always the first in the office. Oh yeah. yeah oh. And, uh, and I used to remember... Sampai-sampai kita duduk tepi pagar tunggu orang masuk tengok bandar. Oh. So, tu eh, bos sampai. Scary, eh. Yeah. <laughs> just, just to pass a message lah. Understand? Uh, just But you pass. consistently do it? I consistently do it. it is a, you know, you have to make a conscious effort because you want to do a transformation kind of stuff. It's a message that you want to give, right? Understand. And the message must start from you lah. Mm. So, you must walk the talk and really show you. It's serious kan? Kalau you cakap-cakap, you pun matang lambat, balik awal, then people don't believe in the change you want to make. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so you must be the chief change officer. That's what I always say. So change starts chief, with you. Chief. So you need to demonstrate you know, what the kind of reform that you want to be. You know? So punctuality is something that I'm very, very particular. Kauma pun kena. Kalau sebab sebab makan lambat, nak ulang. No, because to me it's not fair. Mm. And you you are paid to come on time. Yep. So aman lah kan. Kena buat lah. True. And you have meetings. People you know come to meetings and you datang lambat so you are wasting other people's time so it's yeah. not correct lah to me kan? so you need to respect the value of time for other people so I think that's only natural lah. but that shows character lah to me kalau yeah. orang yang culak-culak masa ni you know if important meeting you can also be late on your own I can imagine what you do lah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> orang sense. tak nampak ni wallah wallah kan? uh, so true. I always judge people by punctuality time, time is I think it's very important. Yeah, yeah. Leka, I think kita awal lah ini. Macam deja vu, <laughs> macam deja vu sikit lah. Because when Tan Sri tell, tells me all this, see, sounds like macam riak. Riak juga. It's like leadership by example. <laughs> right? Okay, I think that Tan Sri, you shared how your childhood have developed you and a bit of touch of the memories you had. Hmm. So, and you briefly mentioned you went to US. Right? Yeah. So, we also read that You used to go to University Maryland. of Maryland. That's right. That's right. We're in Washington, Washington it? DC. It's yeah. Maryland. Yeah, it's close to Washington DC. About yeah. maybe uh, half, no, half an hour driving. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, can you share a bit, uh, Tan Sri? Macam mana pengalaman Tan Sri during your anak US perantauan? Ah, uh, anak perantauan and tak boleh share banyak banyak. Kan? <laughs> 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 Itu zaman orang <laughs> muda ni kita bayu sikit kena tapis beb. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Kita tengok Tan Sri hari ni macam baik kan? <laughs> uh, Dikeluarkan true colour susah <laughs> nah, It's I cannot you know Say more about that experience lah you know. yeah. I mean Masa tu kita baru fresh from school kan yep. yeah. I've never been overseas yeah. Of course lah not saying I've been overseas Tapi pergi mana kat Medan Indonesia That's all <laughs> in Singapore 45 okay. minutes <laughs> Never travel Just you know, like 24 uh, hours away yeah. So oh. when I When I got Um Uh, scholarship from Petronas. I was lucky enough to get a scholarship from Petronas. So, and we were chosen to go to Maryland. And you know, masa interview tu, orang kata, apa jurusan ambil kan? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, I said, eh, actually, mungkin nak kena jadi engineer kot. Mm-hmm. I don't you know, I mean, at that, I never thought it was, it was civil. So, I, I didn't like, you know, electrical. So, I just wanted civil engineer because I like to build things. So, mm-hmm. macam lah, civil engineer. Bukan kata minat gila pun, tapi thought, okay lah. So, they sent me to University of Maryland. So Maryland is a very good school uh, in engineering um, and there was about six of us. Mm. So I still remember the uh, Subang International Airport lah, yep. and you know, my parents there sent me off you know, the Petronas officer and we people were going to different, different destinations. So the six of us went to University of Maryland and University of Maryland at that point in time there's hardly any Malaysians only three Malaysians and both are postgraduate. Mm-hmm. This is the first time 
Malaysian, Malaysian government ini. sending undergraduates wow. to UCL <coughs> Maryland. So bila kita sampai ni, uh, Syaf, Syaf, we were there new, you know, um, of course, yang the four other people, the five other my friend ni, orang langgi tak pernah, you know, travel lah, you know, and doesn't mungkin Singapore, it's just all in Malaysia kan. Hmm. So I was supposed to be their leader lah. You know? <laughs> so I pergi, kita cari-cari, you know, first we stayed in a hotel for about four days. Hmm. And kita tak ada rumah kan. Then we went to school university, register, then look for housing lah. So I think there's one, uh, that is that early point I make a very important decision. My father, I, I remember masa kat airport, di pesan lah, kata, now when you go, get a degree, you know, make sure that you pass, you, hmm. you become an you know, engineer, but You also learn about US lah. Yeah. Learn about people. I remember that, you know, message they get. So when I went there, when we were looking for housing, typically, apa kena mahu kan ni? Cari rumah semua duduk sekali kan? Duduk sama-sama lagi. So I I told my you know, five other friends, say, Ebe, you know, I say, I, I want to stay on my own. Oh. Um, I want to stay with my own dengan Mak Salih, Mak Salih lah. Huh. So I thought, kenapa? Tak boleh lah, tak boleh kan? Kata, tak ada. We will see, we will see every day, lepa, you know, but I, see, I just want to do this. Kan? So they live among themselves, five of them. Uh, I think oh, they two, live uh, among three themselves? Three bedroom, apa benda cari lah. I mean, we, we all help each other. And <coughs> me, I, I rented a room in a house that has other people lah. Mak Shali ada hari ini, and the Jewish oh. border kan. Hmm. I, of course, I don't know who they are, but I just went, I think, oh, I think look. so I was given a basement room kan. Yep. Purely because I just want to integrate myself With the uh, um, among the community. Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course, there's a boundaries lah that you do again, makan, you know, get some young and all that. But every day I will meet my five other friends. You know, we 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 go together very close. I go masalan, we go to the apartment, we cook. But I even know I come back home mm. and I stay among. So I I meet real good friends also among the others. Kan? So that's one really important. Decision that I make, lah, you know, and to that it can also builds my character, lah. Mm-hmm. Okay, you see also the good thing and the bad things. Dalam rumah kan dengan orang mabuk, orang bisa, you know, orang bisa ganja. Ya Allah, that's it. I just get it. Oh no, <laughs> I, that's one thing I'm, I'm I'm proud of. You know, I I managed to yeah, stay away from yeah. that, but. It's interesting lah, you know. Yeah, uh, I think orang-orang lama ni, I mean the ones that study in the US apa dulu-dulu, orang boleh control benda ni. Yeah, kan? Maksudnya yeah. bila hmm. apa orang minum ke orang isap ganja ke, dia boleh tepis. Yep. Tapi macam budak-budak sekarang ni macam beza yeah. sikit. Influence, yeah. I think yeah. it's obviously ketahanan diri lah. Yeah. Jadi, diri Mungkin lah. jati diri tu ditanam kuat awal. masa yes. muda. So, kan? yeah. Yes. Yeah. so that was one important. So of course I went study engineering, you know. Um, Then one of the thing that also I think builds, uh, as I too, you get a scholarship and you go to Maryland. Maryland is considered the like Washington DC, mahal lah, mm. as compared to those that has been sent to Southern Illinois, Indiana. Again, I think the cost of living is much cheaper. Mm-hmm. So the same amount of money that you pay, you get a bit more. So I, my father couldn't afford to give me the allowance. So I, I need to get the extra money. So I work. I think I work for, from the second semester. Until my last year, oh, I work. So I anchor kerja macam macam. I work as a bus boy, mm-hmm. a clean dishes. Ticket. Clean no, ticket. I mean bus boy. Uh, 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 clean dishes in the cafeteria. Oh. Yeah. Waiter. I work as a football referee. Oh, oh, that's the best part. Bagi you know? rekap pada masa ni. You are out. <laughs> I, I work as a truck driver. Oh, yeah, delivering uh, printed, uh, you know, um, sessionary so for for the university. Mm-hmm. So I work, you know, and I and look forward to getting my paycheck at the end yeah. of the month. So the value of money, I I really cherish. Like, of course, scholarship, lah, but it's not enough to have a to have a to have a life. To have a life. Yeah. Have a life. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, travel. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I I every ho- spring break I would travel. Every holiday, you know, me and my friend jump blanket, jump jalan. Yeah, I visit my friend in Illinois. I went to Boston. I went to New York. Oh. Yeah, and I went to Buffalo. So travel lah kan. But on a scholarship, yeah. there's no way. No. There's no way. I mean, you want to buy decent clothes and mm. not begin enjoy and kind of, this kind of thing. You know, and those are the things. And so. I, I make it a point, you know. Uh, of course, you need to balance between work and expense of study, lah. You know, I mean, I'm not the. To be honest, I'm not a four flat person, lah. Oh. But I pass, because my point is, 
I I would get a degree yeah, because kalau kalau betul nani kalau you fail you go below certain CGPA they take by scholarship oh, yeah, so yeah. you need to maintain a certain CGPA for sure but I want to learn more you know but that's something that I mean and I was a member of the Chinese Student Association Malaysian student tak ada ada apa nama orang tak ada apa I was a member of itu itu juga lah I was a member of the Indonesian Student Association oh. yeah, and I was active among them you know so they took it and just where I am. Then I played hockey for the university. Oh. Field hockey. Uh, no, I'm just active in sport. When I was in Penang, I played hockey and I was an athlete. Uh, so I played hockey. Then I travel with the university, you know, mm. uh, to go to uh, at a tournament in Toronto, in New York, you know, in Indiana. So it, it gives me a good balance in life, lah, you know. And I, when I look back, it's, it's, uh, it's experience that money cannot buy. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. And if I took a different position, Not to say that I mean I will be different, but I think I will be a different individual. Yep. If I that first one week, if I said I'm going to stay with my friends, I'm not Malaysian, I think I will be different. Yeah. So uh, like you, you lah, both of you in, in your life can other situation. Yeah, can you you can about conclusion and the yeah. wisdom of other people. And then you just have to make decision, and that is basically a turning point. I mean, so in that period of the five years that I was there. Uh, those are the I think things that I do that have mold me you know, as the right person lah, you know. And cross engineering and then you know like at Maryland, kita tahu nak keluar. You know, you engineer ni kalau you pergi sekolah, pergi kelas semua mainly boys saja. Mm-hmm. I mean, kalau ada girls pun tomboy lah sekarang. <laughs> <laughs> so I want I remember I there's one class that I took and uh, it's called psychology one zero one. And the reason why I saw Mishra that took right because I just want to be among the ladies. I do want to away. I do want to away. I do. Yeah, but it's it's an elective, so I just took pass fail lah. I just bukan alu aja, but I learned a lot. It's a it's a psychology one on one. But it's the, the people skill ataupun awet gorak ni skill lah. Both, 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 both. both. <laughs> uh, but but the, itulah how kita masa lah. Mana muda semua kita go to that yeah. space yeah. lah kan. Yeah. Nakan nakan skill lah. Tapi berpada pada lah kan. Yeah. Kalau tak ada nakan tak ada lah colorful lah kan. So that builds your character. Kan? Yes. Betul. Ada <laughs> jantan lah. Ha. Ah, oh ada jantan <laughs> story ya. <yeah. laughs> so I I think. Uh, Tan Sri, you shared that from even from before you went to US. I think the the lesson there is the same, where you have adaptability and also where you go for sports. Uh, it probably have developed your discipline, disciplinary. Many people traits well. they know that I was the champion in Penang for 110 meter hurdles. Wow, hurdle, wow. lompat, 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 ah, lompat, lompat, lompat. Lompat pagar. Huh? Yeah. I was in champion. I was supposed to present Penang in the Malaysian Games. Mm. Wow. Uh, Tapi boleh percaya sebab tak sedih. Uh, ada tinggi yeah, kan. Yeah, so, nak lompat tak boleh. I mean, to be in sports, you perlukan disiplin. Yes, uh, I think definitely. From, from, you know from, lah. Uh, yeah, to be, yeah. You need to have discipline. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Sure. Correct. So, then after that, you came back to Malaysia, start your... First work. First work in, in Petronas, Petronas, Petronas as a project engineer. And after that, you worked and moved into the corporate international planning, yeah, corporate planning and, and international, international business, business development, development unit. Can you share a bit your experience macam mana after that <coughs> when you join in Petronas? Okay. Graduating as an engineering student. Correct. Right? Uh, macam mana tu? Okay, I think let's rewind sikit sebelum Petronas. When I, yeah. I finished in 1985, uh, I worked for uh, about nine months in the US after I graduated but Petronas Oh, nine back. months? Not not immediately? Uh, no, I mean uh, after, gra- after graduate uni, I kerja dulu. Uh-huh. Oh, tak balik dalam Malaysia dulu. So, but I thought I could work for a few years uh, but then Petronas call back. Mm-hmm. Okay, under, lah. under Petronas punya scholarship, scholarship right? Yeah. Yeah. So we came back but when we came back, there was no job because two, as soon as we about to come back, I think there was a recession. Mm-hmm. It was 1985. Yep. 85. Yeah. So, back to now, masa tu, tak ada kerja lah. So, eh, kita ni dah dapat degree kan? <laughs> kita tak ada kerja. Gila, babe. Kita <laughs> macam mana ni kan? Tak ada kan? You know, I mean, rely on parents kan? I want to earn my own money. So, I was in KL. I stayed at my friend's house lah. You know, my housemate. Dekat mm-hmm. US. Dia ada rumah kat sini. He's, you know, from a well-to-do family. So, I think aku nak cari kerja lah. Nah, no, sementara uh-huh. aku tunggu kan while waiting for penna. So my first job actually, Ashraf Mishra, was a Italian furniture salesman. Oh, nah, tak boleh. Oh. Jalan pang. That showroom now is converted to a proton showroom. 
Oh, <laughs> you take over juga. <laughs> I'm an engineer. Eh? <laughs> One thing to sell Italian furniture. <laughs> And Italian furniture, I said, I said, much at that time, mungkin mungkin lah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ini nanti ni vai. Sepuluh ribu, dua puluh ribu ni mahal. It's oh. like you know, a few hundred thousand today in value of money. Yes. Kan? Uh. So what was the brand? Coba, ingat tak? Huh? Nama brand. Ah, uh, I cannot remember lah. But it's all Italian. I know it's important. I had to baca, but. Minum adalah yang dalam masuk-masuk tu bukan orang cari-cari pun dati dati bukan tak lepo kan. <laughs> so at that point tapi tak pernah jual kan. You have to have good the skill and basic pay. Your additional is the commission that you get. Selling. Oh masa tu ayat power tu. <laughs> kena baca, nak kena kelintung. <laughs> yeah, yeah, aduh. <laughs> Then there was another experience. Mm-hmm. about selling and marketing. Yes. Uh, it's, it's not no more your longest, it's your ability to to sell. To goreng. To goreng. <laughs> <laughs> like a better word. Yeah. Uh, ability to goreng becomes very important. So I I think I work about seven to eight months. Then of course, Petronas finally called and said, look, we got a job for you. Mm-hmm. So okay, I went to Petronas and I work in Petronas Gas as engineer. Alhamdulillah, I was lucky. I was assigned to this project. You know, you remember those time uh, Petronas built a pipeline from Kerti to Singapore, the gas pipeline. Yep. It's about 743 kilometers of gas. I was a, a pipeline Signed. engineer at that point in time. Mm. And, and I worked with a uh, with consultant, Masali juga lah, Canadian, mm. Nova Corp. So our job was in PWDC, design lah. So actually, you know, set up the design work, you know, how to lay pipe, you know, in the in the ground, how to make sure that it's welded properly, how to be operated. So at that point of time, <clears throat> I was happy, um, and I got an opportunity to go to Canada to do training because Petronas said, "Okay, now that you are going to build a pipeline, somebody has to operate the pipeline. Mm. No one has been commissioned." So our partner was Canadian, so I was sent to Calgary and uh, and uh, Edmonton for about six months to learn uh, at the company Nova Corp in Canada to learn how to play. It's in winter. I mean, freezing cold, you know, in Calgary, I mean, in the winter, it's freezing cold. Yep. So we worked. <clears throat> so when, when we came back, then because of that experience, then they assigned me to be in Sagama, where we're the, that's the operation center. Lah. So all this while, I'm happy as an engineer, lah, you know, yep. I go to the right of way, in yes. Langutan, pasang papai, patu pergi inspection, buat pigging, balik, buat reporting, then we go and do the, you know, Naik helikopter, walk, you know, drive, you know, see the right, right, or the right away lah. Tengok ada uh, land erosion and all that. Then I, I think that's one point. <coughs> then I said, this is this is not me lah. <coughs> I want I want to do something more. You know, I, I don't mind engineering, tapi macam tak tak puas lah. You know, you come to lah, something is missing somewhere. Mm. So <coughs> I I didn't want to do. So but I do, did met somebody and uh, and a neighbor of mine, namely Armin Fendi. He was. Recruited to be partners to create this what we call international business development. Mm. Then he said, "Hey, Said, you want to join me, lah? You know, I was in Zagamat. I tell uh, John Upa, I tell business development, lah, uh, international business. Talk about Asia. You know, I think you got the people skill. Yeah. You know, you're in the US, you can speak. You know, you have some, you know, uh, you know, business mm-hmm. acumen. You know about technical. You're engineer. I think it's enough for you to learn. So I, and then I came to KL. You know, the weekend talk to him. That's okay, lah." So I, I actually pindah uh, ah pindah minta tu I quit the job and Petronas juga masuk dalam corporate planning. Tapi is under the same company yeah, under, under Petronas juga lah, but different division lah. But maknanya you down took a career step that you're not going to be engineer anymore. Oh, yeah. and I think one of the also thing that make me decide masa tu when I was in Sukarno I got married hmm. to Kajala. So when I was married, I was in Sukarno. She was in KL, so every weekend, weekend has been uh, five of us oh. the drive because all of us family got been there. Kan? Yeah. I think this is not on now. Uh. <laughs> 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 and, and I think we were expecting Adam lah at that point of time. Oh. See, I think uh, it's not right. Adam is your first son, eh? first son, yeah. yeah. So uh, see, I need to make this, and so that helps me to make that decision faster. So I say. Tak tahu, tak tahu apa pun masalah business development, I'm just going to do it. Because if not, by the time Adan get born, I'm going to get born, susah lah, kesian kan, di jalan, it's not, not fair mm-hmm. for her to be alone. So I made a decision, I mean, I don't know what actually, went to business development, then I was in charge of Southeast Asia, which is you know, Vietnam, Thailand, Cambodia, and to develop business for Petronas. Yeah. So what we do is, we, we're not the operating unit, so we work people from the refinery, people from the gas, but my job is to write proposal, lah, so. <laughs> and how to create the business, go on, so I, I, I will travel to Vietnam with my boss, mm. I will travel to Cambodia, and then 
I was assigned to open the Petronas office in Hanoi and wow. in Phnom Penh. That was my KPI. Mm. Masa tu, imagine, tak, kat Vietnam, mana ada bank, mana ada credit card, bawa cash, babe. <laughs> Petronas punya cash lah? US dollars, yeah, wow. cash. But can you? You, you, you know, I mean, I, I draw, <laughs> I, know, I mean, but I, I think I brought 200,000 US dollars. Wow. That's a but lot you money, had to declare right? and everything. Huh? Declare lah. Declare. I know, but, but then, because you had to buy, I need to rent a house, mm. renovate, beli TV, beli kate, beli furniture, semua, set up for the So you stayed there in Vietnam? In Vietnam. So I go to Hanoi every two weeks. Wow. Pergi, pergi, pergi balik kan. So, and then, of course, work in Petro Vietnam. So that's another, from an engineer, I had the skill of discipline of facts, mm. you know. Uh, mm. So I am, I'm very, I, I always rely on facts. Then, then that trip when I was in international business, I know about strategy. I know about crop development. And can mm. I present it? Imagine I give you, I was about 32 years old. And begin present My to age, pe- uh. Uh, mm. Petro, Petro Vietnam. And umur dah 60 lor kan. <laughs> Talk about refinery, you know. I mean, and then the interpreter. So really you have to watch people, understand them, you know, and have lunch with them, find out more about the business, how to become close to them. Cambodia pun sama. Buka sesuai minyak, you know. I actually negotiate to open 11 petrol station petrolers in Cambodia. Wow. Negotiate dengan gangster, gangster Cambodia ni kan. Ada <laughs> 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 pistol tepi ni. This is all real stories, you know. What negotiate with petrolers? That's what petrolers ask me to do. <laughs> I'm sure petrolers wouldn't send you if they didn't know you could, you wouldn't have. Wow, wow, wow. I mean, I'm sure that was the reason lah. But yeah, yeah. it too, there was another part of my life that really mm. builds, you know, and yeah. uh, from... Uh, That's like starting a business juga lah in many ways. Uh-huh. Super yeah. lah. Yeah. You talk about the, you know, the strategy, you talk about the financial, yeah. the, the value benefit, you talk about the people, kan? of course, you're not the area operator, but to put a proposal mm. and for petrolers to sign an agreement, You know, sama, sama juga petrol minyak. I, when I opened the office in Cambodia, uh, we opened about 12 petrol stations, signed the lease agreement, the whole team duduk berkemah dalam hotel, negotiate, hire people to operate, get the products out, masuk dalam, you know, mm. buat logo. <laughs> All this is business. You but know, I, I was not running it, lah, but I was in charge it, to start it up. And that's an experience that to me, builds me For the next phase of life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, kena mm-hmm. funny kan? Allah SWT oh, buat, you know, satu-satu fasa kan. Uh, ini semua dah diatur. So, I, when I look back, it's just, everything has been guided lah, to mm-hmm. some extent kan, you know. And the question is, you didn't have to understand what's your purpose in life and all that. Mm-hmm. So, that part of Petunah, I think, and you know, Petunah is very structured. Yep. You know, I mean, I'm, I feel proud, you know, that I'm a Petunah scholar, of course, I've served mm-hmm. uh, Petunas, you know, from Petunas Guest, and I went to international business, and I was in corporate planning. And, and I work hard lah. Masa tu memang lah, you know, I work hard. And I still remember one particular, I just want to share this with audience. Yes. Ni cita gila lah, kena Petunah kan. I was in Petunas, I was in Phnom Penh, uh, and I was told to look for a refinery in uh, uh, at a port called Shiano Vela, which is about 200 kilometers away. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I said, hey, why don't you go and look at the refinery and tell us the report? I said, okay. So I went to the ambassador, I said, let's arrange for security. I said, Phnom Penh is not as safe. I said, with the Kemeru. So we duduk kat Sofitel Cambodian I remember the hotel and dua kita datang uh, colonel and two military guards mm-hmm. so I was belakang my other kawan duduk depan mm-hmm. uh, so every car me and one of us the petunas and askar with me as a colonel and depan driver askar lah it's police drive from Sanovin keluar 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 uh, so the colonel give me a pistol the, give you uh, again uh, you this is for you she, Right then, yeah, just in case. Scary. Ingat ni, ingat ni nak Just in case. So okay lah. I was a scout, kan? So, oh, you, you knew yeah. how to. So I, I know. Yeah, okay. we could we went go to, to the fire range, you know, uh, and all that. So tengok lah, make a scene. Eh, tu tengok ada satu bullet aja. Pelik kan? So I said, eh, why why you giving me a revolver with one bullet? <laughs> and so, this is you know if you uh, if you meet the Khmer Rouge if something happen this bullet is not to shoot the Khmer Rouge it's to shoot yourself Oosh. <laughs> I've seen it Oosh. this is not a joke no way uh, <laughs> I don't want to kill you I don't want to kill you I don't want to kill you to shoot yourself <laughs> Maksudnya Because, dia but, memang tak ada uh, point yeah, lah lawan. Kalau kamu cek saya, you better don't go to no the chance. torture yeah. lah. You just shoot yourself. 
Oh. So anyway, when we drive, so there are many roadblocks, about 15 roadblocks. So every time the roadblock, yeah, the, the police will on the window, uh, baling wokok, waktu tu, they, wokok is like macam tu, then do it lah. Mm. Kemudian kan. Then it's lepas. Like lepas. We went back, we stayed in Sanoville for one night, then we came back. I tell you the experience. <laughs> I tell you, kita kita nak kecut. And when the time when you pass a zone, you people see, you can see the police, the army at the front, dah dengan dia punya apa ni AK-47, so dia yonggal. Because it's a very tense area. Because at that time, I remember when we did the news, a few people were kidnapped by the Khmer Rouge. Because it's a very hostile environment. Yeah. Kan? So, but, masa tu, because instruction, tak terfikir pun. Pasal danger kan. We go. So when we came back, dah senang. So they took us to a shooting ring, tembak, bawa 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 but that is the discovery that we went through, you know. And again, you know, that part, you know, builds a different character character of yourself, you know. How yeah. do you adapt, how you avoid danger, how you can sniff, you know, uh, you know, risk, mitigate risk and all that. Uh. And living in uh, Cambodia and Hanoi at the point in time, and this is countries that's about 15 or 20 years behind us. Mm. And Hanoi pun tak ada air fresh. Eh? Yeah. Buka, kalau nak mandi kat hotel, ambil mineral water, dua tom, mandi dengan mineral water. <laughs> Bilas bukan air dia kotor kan. <laughs> ah, that's the situation in the end. Mm. But you do it for for the nation lah, you know. And, yeah, yeah. Mm. And before we actually renovated the house and we stayed at the office lah. Mata tu dulu office. Rumah kat office, dulu kat office lah. No. So, I mean, that's that's how I started Petronas. Then when I left, uh, I think I left Petronas in 95 after serving my contract for 10 years. Yep. 97, uh, I think you went yeah. to High Combe. Uh, I, 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 I wanted to do something different. Yeah. Mm. So, after your journey dekat Petronas ni, Tan Sri berhijrah ke automotive industry pula. And I think this is the industry that you are super well known for lah. <laughs> and, <laughs> and you were appointed as GM and after that as the CEO of Highcom Holdings right. uh, uh, Berhad yeah. so how was your trans transition of your career growth daripada dekat Petronas as someone yang macam yelah uh, mungkin masa tu senior juga tapi not as a GM ataupun CEO punya level kan and transition yeah. to to the CEO ataupun GM punya yeah. position ni pula yeah, you know, I mean, and after 10 years serving my contract, you know, I said, I've got oil and gas. Lah, so, uh, so, so I said, look, I mean, I'm always ambition. I mean, you, you always look forward lah, kan? yeah. where you want to be in your life. Kan? You want to be an oil man? Okay, lah, you stay a bit. Lah. But I said, okay, lah, oil is good. But at that point in time, I think manufacturing was the key driver for the economy. Uh, mm. Heavy manufacturing. So I said, look, I want to get something like, you know, I mean, again, back to what I like to do, build things. Mm -hmm. I said, but story, story, okay, but you want to get your hands dirty, right? Yeah. So I said, okay, um, who's the, the best company in Malaysia that's about heavy industry? I said, Highcom. Mm -hmm. So I said, I have a friend in Highcom. I said, hey, look, I want early enough for an interview. And so I went for an interview. And you look at my background and say, okay, I will hire you as a manager for business development, but assign you to this new project that they want to do, which is a commercial project. So I don't know what the project was. So I took the job, you know, I was good pay, I left Petronas, <coughs> and then they assigned me into this. So the project was to build the first, what we call commercial vehicle for the country. It was a two-kit, other Produa, other Proto, but we had a national commercial vehicle. Logi lah. Mm -hmm. Oh, lori, ah, okay. lori, commercial. lori, commercial. So, they assigned me to that project, uh, and we were supposed to work with Tata, then they told me Suzu, then after that, I was assigned to Pekana to build up the factory. Oh, uh, so I built, lori. Ah, masa tu, uh, DRB Highcom um, was uh, on a load, then at that time, Tansi Yaya took over, Arwah mm. Tansi Yaya took over the Highcom, Highcom at that point in time, then it becomes DRB Highcom. Yeah. Oh. So, bila di Highcom ni, the plan will have to be in, in Pekan lah, because mm. that's where the base of DRB. So, I was assigned, but I was just a, a manager, 
um, project manager. So, uh, my job was to build the factory. Mm. So, I went to the partner with Isuzu. So, I went to keep on pergi balik dengan Jepun lah. I was to in uh, in uh, Tokyo. Go back, then build up the plan. So, Adam and Auntie was... <laughs> so, I stayed in Kel- I stayed in Pekan. Okay. Nah, but, Do you want to get We can lah. Mm, can I spend again? Can I spend again? Because uh, my wife was working and Adam was going to school. Kan? It's not fair for me to relocate. I just want to get the proper education. So back to a weekend husband again. So three years I work and I, I build up uh, from scratch. It's mm-hmm. a greenfield plant. I become factory, commission. Then we launch the high comp percussa. Mm-hmm. Which is, that's the name yeah, of the... Yeah, that's the name of the truck. Lah. Yeah, yeah. Become, so that was my first association to a national project. Mm. And Mr. Tutumade, he came in, he launched a national <coughs> truck wow. called High Compacasa. And, and Alhamdulillah, when the first CEO left, I was promoted to be the CEO of that mm. company, lah, the commercial vehicle company. Yeah. yeah so I wasn't fine, you know, I, I was a CEO already. And at that time, I was already about 37 years old. 38 years old. Yep. So Alhamdulillah, I think quite young. Mm. You know, uh, <laughs> the driver. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But still, we can husband. Mm. I say, it's not on. You know? And I think auntie was expecting my Hakim, mm. uh, my next son. I said, I need to make a decision. I, and this cannot prolong. You know? And Rizki, second son has, I think, you know, I'll not determine the Rizki of your mm. children. Yep. You know? So at that point in time, Produa offer came, the CEO, Produa, Produa knew what I did in high com and then I said, okay, why don't you want to come back? They pun tahu I nak balik kan? They oh. <laughs> pancing lah. So you want to come back? I was a CEO, but I then went to Produa, I was only a senior GM. But to me, name doesn't matter lah. Produa was a big company, you know, I was comfortable with Isuzu in Japan, Produa, Datsu, Toyota. So I said, okay, the culture is about the same. It's also a national, you know, national project. project. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I masuk, jadi senior GM. Hmm. Uh, so then uh, was real buat kita buat terang lah tuan lain kan ni baru nak buat kita, kita. Uh, okay. and then dah dah, dah, dah su, kan? yeah. so I think that that is the CEO days pula lah hmm. yang tadi tu kira macam pre-CEO lah kan yeah, correct, correct. so I think yeah we have learned quite a lot about Tan Sri punya background yes kan? and I think uh, thank you juga to Tan Sri for sharing especially your your background childhood background and then Uh, kisah-kisah nakal sikit kan? <laughs> Sampai masuk Petronas And then right. Sampai masuk Highcom kan And so, how it has built you Yeah how it's you built today, your character yeah. And I think Yeah Perjalanan tu Membuatkan kita faham lah Macam mana Tan Sri ni Boleh jadi Macam sekarang ni The character yang hari ni kan hmm. So We're going to take a short break And yeah. after the break We're going to go Dive into the CO days lah The Pro Dua The Proton sure. The Petronas right. days And uh, so to our audience out there So make sure you guys catch us after the break Yes right? Stay tuned Alright Alright, welcome back to welcome Apa back. Cerita Podcast uh, Bersama kita Dan juga Tan Sri Syed Zainal Abidin Yes So the first half of the segment Kita dah banyak bercerita And uh, now we're going to continue on with the second, sec- uh, the third segment already, which yep. is uh, the CEO days. Yes. Yeah. So we hope you guys dapat banyak banyak manfaat from the first segment. And now this is the sweet sweet part yeah, of the juicy one. Yeah, the yeah, juicy the part. One. Yes. The one But that before we can that, learn a lot. Yeah. again, we want to remind everybody out there: please do subscribe. It will help our algorithm in our mission untuk beri manfaat kepada lagi ramai uh, youth out there. Inshallah. Inshallah. So Tan Sri, uh, you touched a bit your transition between uh, high from Highcom to towards Perdua Peru- as a GM. So pada tahun 1999, <coughs> Tan Sri dilatih sebagai pengurusi besar kanan Perdua hmm. dan seterusnya sebagai pengarah eksekutif Perdua Auto Corporation. Antara ke- kejayaan yang sangat signifikan adalah pelancaran Pro Dua Myvi. Siapa tak ada Myvi di yeah, rumah? King of the road. Yeah, king of the road. <laughs> I pun selalu teringin, teringin juga nak Myvi. Hey, you know, yeah. my first ever car that I was I dri- uh, driven was a Myvi, one orange. No, oh. uh, I think that was one of the color juga, uh, the original color kan. Many stories about Myvi. Yeah. <laughs> Pada tahun 2005, uh, Tan Sri ceritakan perjalanan Tan Sri di Pro Dua. 
And maybe some stories about the king of the road. Yes, <laughs> exactly how it yeah, came I think Perdua really, you know, is, sets the real foundation of me from an automotive industry. Like remember before I was in high crown commercial vehicle, commercial vehicle, quite simple. Lah. Mm. So when I'm Perdua, uh, Perdua is a joint venture between, you know, Malaysia mm. and uh, uh, Japanese company, lah, uh, Datsu. So I, I was in charge, I was senior GM at that point in time, I was in charge of manufacturing. I mean, the whole plan was undermined. You know, like, I mean, that's where... You started as senior GM? Uh, senior yeah. GM. Okay. Uh, reporting to the Group MD. Lah. And the mm-hmm. Group MD at the time was uh, a Japanese. Oh. Uh, oh. So, I, but I was in charge of manufacturing. I worked with the Japanese, there was also my Jap- Japanese counterpart. Lah. Uh, but managing the day-to-day operation, all uh, material become my responsibility. And this is where... I learned the discipline about going down to the ground lah. Kalau in Jepun ni, orang panggil gemba kan. Yeah, gemba. Uh, gemba, gemba walk. Itu pergi gemba, walk on the floor lah. Yeah. So, pekerja uh, saya pagi-pagi, is pagi, I go to the office, see the production, then I just walk the floor. Yep. In and out, from one to the other, lah, to exercise lah kan. But I just want to understand the operation. Solve problem, people issue, part dah sampai lah, kadang quality, then penghujung, I want to make sure the quality of the car. And I was fortunate enough, uh, Shraf Ishak, to be sent to Japan for six months uh, because they saw me and they said, okay, Tanji, we want to mold you as the next managing director of Purduala. Wow. But to do that, you have to go to a certain training. So I was sent for six months. Uh, six training. months? Huh? Uh, so, so, what? Uh, Where uh, is uh, Osaka. Osaka, Japan? Osaka, Japan. And I worked in a factory in, uh, in, uh, in, 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 uh, in uh, Datsu. There's one particular story that I want to share with you and the audience, you know, that until today. So I went to Datsu. I mean, you know, I was a senior GM, kan? Bukan lah kita orang bawa-bawa, kan? Yep. Yalah, so lah. nak pergi training. So my view, the training kat Jepun ni, kita nak do office lah. Jadi yeah. boss, kan? Yeah. How to manage, and that. So I went to report to Mr. Higashi, I remember. Kan? Masa tu, he's the VP of manufacturing. So Higashi-san, I'm here for the report. Oh, okay, Zana-san, come. So, I kata, okay, dia bagi briefing sikit. Lepas tu, the next day datang, nak start training lah. So, I was excited lah. Okay, bagi dia kata training, uh, Zana-san, you follow this guy, nama, I cannot remember, o- Oasis-san ke? Bawa dalam kilang. So, there's one circle kat kilang kan? So, Zana-san, please stand on the circle. Kita, okay. Mama suruh beli duduk lah. So, I beli lah circle kan? Uh, then, just watch. Okay, dia suruh tunggu. Lepas tu, dia belah. <laughs> dia watch apa? Dia watch the... Just watch the operation lah. Dia kata, mamak ni kan, ajar aku... <laughs> I'm a senior GM, takkan ni training kan? So, I'm just... Uh, <laughs> you know, kata, okay lah, ikut lah. Ikut orang suruh kan, duduk. And then watch. <laughs> Dalam kilah kan, you like to watch. So, tengok lah. Tengok, tengok. Then, lunch break. Batang break, letak balik. Uh, watch lagi. So, balik. <laughs> So that was my training first day. <laughs> so second day, kata okay lah mungkin. So report to Kak Sisan. Kak Sisan, please proceed. The OEC is bawa lagi. Pergi circle. Pergi another circle pula. <laughs> In the factory. So, so I got very upset sih lah. Kata, mamak ni Agitated aku datang lah. nak training kan. Macam kena bully. Ah, kena bully. <laughs> Jangan mana. <laughs> so after one week, I I call uh, my boss lah. Kata, ya Rasan, I'm on my way. Why are they... Uh, Uh, send me to sit in the circle, you know, send the circle for a week. Where's the training? Gerak lah. Itu masa tu tempo kan. Itu, I think he could call there. So, the next week I went to the factory and then I, I said, uh, I met Higashi lah. Zana San, I heard you were not happy. Last week, yeah, Higashi San, you know, <laughs> I, I come to him, you know. Uh, lepas tu, dia kata, okay, you follow me. So, dia bawa I. So, dia bawa saya, I said, Git, stand in circle. Ini juga. Circle lagi. Okay. So, I kata, okay, Zanasan, last week you, what did you learn? I said, what do you see? So, I say, yeah, I see, you know, parts moving, I see, you know, people, you know, installing this in the car and all that. No, no, what do you see, Zanasan? Why did he ask me? I said, I've answered your question. I've said, no, what actually do you see? So I answered the same thing. I said, no, that's not what. Lepas tu dia cerita. You see that? Yeah. That guy is moving. One other person is... Oh, kan kita kan sebelah orang, orang kerja, sebelah ni buat kerja kan. Hmm. Dia kata, see that guy is still working, but the, the other guy sebelah ni is now idle. Tak buat kerja apa. What do you see? Hmm, I see he's not working. Nah, that's wastage. Hmm. 
that she is inefficiency. And that cannot happen. Baru I realised kan, the training of Toyota and Dazu for you to be a boss. <laughs> you, see, son, 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 you want to be a boss, you must learn the first fundamental is about observation. Mierka ala pangi. Mierka. Observe and the visual. Then you know what is efficient, what's not efficient. That's one thing until today, Asha, when Uncle Kalo pergi mana, when I was a petuna, when I was proto, man, I go and I observe. Mm. And I'm trained to know and to see where are the wastage, are the inefficiency. Mm. By just spending, kat petuna sendiri siapa yang tengok? Oh, ini orang menunggu 10 minit, 5 minit menunggu, inefficient. This is not a good experience. But that's very important. So I came back. After training on Asmanga, now I'm training and then they say, okay, we want to do the king of the road, my V. Mm. But then see, the training six months too is just observation? No, no. Uh, the, 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 the first two weeks lah. But two, you can give that. Kalau nak mula, I say, no pandang, I say, mati. Hari-hari pergi kerja, but duduk kerja. Okay lah. They send to me a different part of training. But generally, it's right. It's all about Understanding and observation. Mm-hmm. It's not because managing, it's not difficult. But if you don't understand the crux of the business, what's happening in the front floor, you say you might not be a good manager. That's understand. rule number one. So when I came back, then Okala, then I came back, they become the executive director, ED, of the entire plant and yep. the company. <coughs> so again, we want to do the first, uh, no, king of the road, my V. Yep. Uh, And so before that, the, my V lah. You were, like my, my V is a joint between Dasu sekali. Kalau kat Jepun, panggil Toyota Bun. Dasu Bun. We've seen some. Kalau kat dia panggil Toyota, Toyota Paso. Yeah. Kita, my V lah. Yeah. So we came out with the name my V. And I was, I can say today, you can ask, siapa father my V? Ini dia. Itu yang cakap dengan dia orang. Kita ada Tun Mahade sebagai bapa pemodenan. Syed Zainal sebagai bapa my V. And the, the whole idea was to compete against Proton. Mm. So we spent about 24 months, you know, developing the product. You know, I was also went to Japan, you know, meeting, visit a lot of factories, vendor, you know, create and testing. And I really put the best discipline, what I've learned in Japan, about manufacturing, about quality. And the Toyota president or no, vice president came to do the final inspection to say, okay, you have passed the quality. And I tell you, uh, I, saw, uh, I saw Uncle work so hard. We spend sleepless night, sleepless night, just to make sure the car, you know, because everything is delivered. The quality is. Yeah. But my V came out launch, and we never expect my V to hit like, the, the, like, like no breeze. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The first couple of weeks, the booking was... Crazy. We had to oh. double the shield, double the capacity. And of course, today, the rest is history. Like, uh, mm. yep, yep. Do you yes. remember w- the first year, how many MyV did you guys sell? Oh, we, uh, I think we <laughs> registered about 100 over 1,000. I think we only wow. expected about 3,000, 40,000. Mm. And then, of course, the, that one, we rattled the enemy. La. Tripled. So, uh. so, the strange thing is, I was given a sign to build my V. The objective of it is to beat Proton. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> so I was already the MD, the ED. Then I think 2005 because the success, you know, of my V and the promote to me as the deputy managing director of Produa. Supposed to be the next MD lah. Then the national call came. Yeah. Then <laughs> after your success in Proton, the uh, <laughs> Proton needed you, pula. Yeah, lah, I mean, it was a process. I mean, they went to interviews. So I think the head hunter called me and said, hey, uh, "Side." Nak pergi interview tak? Hmm. Macam tu apa? Then he described lah, you know. So I kind of knew who the company was. So I went interview lah. The, the board interviewed me. And I'm not, I was not the only candidate. There was many other foreign candidates. Yep. So hmm. after the interview, I said, <coughs> Senyak mah tak ada kot. So I just went on my own. Then suddenly I got a call. I said, Do you want to, the chairman want to see you? So the man of the board put on game. Who who was the chairman? Uh, right? Aslan. <coughs> so I said, we decided to hire you as the MD. So I like, Wait, talk again. I'm like, but shit, Prudor, man. <laughs> Prudor, were you the CEO or no? I was deputy. the deputy MD. Deputy, deputy. yeah. Okay. No, I mean, it's just like matter. Like of, lah, ni, 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 like two years, I will be the MD anyway. Yeah. Kan? I mean, the Japan matter. You want to localize? You want to be the Malaysian to be the MD? And then you look fit to be the MD because you you have the DNA and all that. So then, of course, so I say I don't know. I'm gonna so, but 
it's 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 you know I'm always like challenged lah. Yep. So I've got you know all you are all the same again. Oh, so I said this is challenging lah. You know. I was supposed to kill this company. Now I'm supposed to sell it. <laughs> wow, that's, 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 a, that's a very unique experience. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I know the people on the other side. Kan, yeah. It's small work. Kan, so I don't say I don't. I don't know whether they're gonna. This is the lesson. Like, uh, accept me, you know. Kan. <laughs> But the government really wants to then uh, send then send money into PM. PM say okay. Who was the PM at that time? Tun or? Uh, no, Abdullah. 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 So it's okay. So like then I then I came in. You know, I mean, came alone. Lah. And and and, 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 and of course people say, hey, Produa, small brother, come to go big brother. <laughs> mm. So when I went to Proton and I, I look at you know I mean from outside I I can understand how how it works and what went wrong you know from my perspective so when I go there again same basic principle I spend a lot of days first couple of months is just you know Do listening you to people care? just <laughs> no but but yeah. talking meeting presentation then just walk the floor then mm. like and then went to the vendors and then you know normally after the hundred days can then you have your own opinion. So I presented the board exactly what I wanted to do, you know, the kind of changes I want to make, you know, and you know, the kind of product. So then I just went for execution, <laughs> and when you have a real plan, again, you know, and then you execute, you know, because there's fine tuning here and there. But yep. basically, is to because Proton at that point in time was uh, losing market share. Thanks to me, you know, not to me, not to me, to the whole, to the whole Produa family, uh, and it was an attack, and I think there were a lot of bad reviews and mm. experience from the customer. Yeah, I think at that time they had Juara, all the weird, weird cars, Juara, uh, Savvy, Savvy, Gen 2, yeah. You know, I mean, I mean, when all when you when competitor again, when the other competitor launched a car, we were the f- first to go to the showroom. Test to do the blah blah blah. And I thought we can, but just to the blah blah. I mean, they would do the same to us, and so I, so get the ni kita ni tak boleh. Because we know we know we know the the economics of the car, the functionality doesn't fit. The audience that he was yeah. trying to position, yeah. mm-hmm. so that's what I inherited. And how do I reverse the fortune of uh, mm-hmm. of Proton at that point in time? So yeah. I went to the board and said, "These are the things that I need to do. Quality is one." So I, that's where I spent a lot of time improving the quality, all the best practices that I learned, and coming up with models mm-hmm. that is Fits. is is what people need, uh, You know, and I need we need to kill the the bad models lah. You know, yep, even yep. though we have to invest it, you know, and because to build a car is about six seven hundred million ringgit they have to spend. Six seven hundred million. Yeah, one per, 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 per model. Per model, model lah. Yeah, oh. if we don't spend that amount of money, if you get the tawil talaku, that's seven hundred million burn down burn. the drain. You cannot recoup. Yeah. And it's not like you boleh tukar kereta pintu ni nak pakai untuk kereta lain yeah. tak boleh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The models are different. Mm. So I think you streamline the yeah. the models as well, right? No, because there are too many platforms. Mm, yeah, platform. Uh, when platform ni typically one platform should have three or four variant. That people are talking about two, one platform is two variant. Oh, so it's not that efficient. Uh, efficient. That efficient. Uh, Japan, for whatever uh, reason, you know, I mean, that's people don't do that. So we need to rationalize lah. So there was a lot of rationalize the platform to make sure there's efficiency. There is also commonization of component. Typically in a car, Ashraf, Ashraf, kan, what people see uh, must be different. What people don't see can be common. Yeah. Pintu nampak lain, tapi belakang pintu ikut yeah, yeah. komponen super aja. Whether you are Tingkap in a Volkswagen yeah. Passat, Volkswagen Golf, sama. Sama. Every bit does that, but proton. Yeah. Took a different approach. Yeah. That time. I think even Tesla, pun kan, they Sama. streamline semua. Hmm. So you commonize. Yeah, common. Seventy percent are common because you want to save cost. Yep. So we need to make that decision to realign by everything, and that takes a long time to realign. Kan? Mm. So then, then my type was come out better models, lah. You know. Mm. So I think uh, came out with Prevay, right? Uh, no, uh, I think we came out with the Sag Persona was the first one. Uh, the Very Gen, nice. Uh, Gen yeah. 2 sudah. I think personal. I think live Sampai quite well. Uh, yep. Quite high demand. Then we had to refresh the Saga. Saga was old, kan? Mm. The old sedan. Then we came up. Then of course it was the Exora, mm. the first MPV they did. I mean, yep. uh, I mean that was really. That's a. I can write a book lah about Exora. Exora. Kan? Which I, will, uh, I think even the name was uh, made to from the public, right? From the public. public yeah, gave yeah. The name. Then of course yeah. my last was a Preve lah. So. <laughs> Again, I mean, I'm was one of the few lah, Shaf. I think you know uh, that had the opportunity to be with three national projects. 
the mm. national commercial vehicle which the triple p uh, what it mentioned no, <laughs> then <laughs> prodoa uh, the king on the road my v yes and of course proton the national car I don't think anyone can claim to have that level of experience. Yes. I mean, this is key Allah SWT. Except for yourself. <laughs> so that's why I need today, the automotive men, people will say the first face to come to me yeah. will be size yeah, yeah. yeah. for, for that reason, lah. not because of another reason, but because people, it becomes synonym. Kan? Yep. So I, I've, I've, that stage in Proton was, was, was very important to me. It was number one from business point of view. Uh, focus on what you want to do, quality, product yep. development, cost efficiency. Then at the end of the day, it's always the customer. Like, I'm one of the few. Dulu, kalau kita design kan, kita tak pernah ajak customer. Customer dah penghujung. When I design Exora, classic example, I, first thing I want to do, I say, look, call the customer. So we call Melayu, Cina, Maci, professional. What do you want in the car, lah, in MPV? It, even before we start designing, you know. So they came in, they say, I want this, I want that, you know what? So I say, okay, well, to my engineers, remember all this. So when we design this car, this is our customer saying, eh? you are not a customer, I'm not a customer, it, uh, but all these features. So the, 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 the development of the Xora developed to really please the customer in all levels of functionality. That is from a design point of view. Lah, you know? Then the people that I assign, You know, I, I said, I don't want to orang tutu because ni untuk orang young family. Yes. Uh, so I want, uh, I, so I took a young guy, Ramadi Iza, to be a project director. I said, Iza, imagine we're building this car for your family. Mm. How do you want the car to look like? You know, mm. your, from a safe point of view, your anak dua, si kat belakang macam mana kan. Mm. So dia internalize he himself, you know, rather than, you know, person that doesn't care about the car, just a car, just, just another product they bought. So he means he put his soul in in the project. Then of course I put few other kaidah lah, you know. But I told them, you know, you malam ni because I believe one thing, you know, Ashraf Israq and as a Muslim, you can make the best car, but you need to have barakah berkat yep. Allah SWT. So we in Exora, it was one of the project I told specifically is uh, every meeting for this Exora project must begin with a fatia, no compromise. Mashallah. Mm. I say I, it's a rule. <laughs> And said, you sanggup tak sanggup? So he did it. So after 17 months, we you know, keep on track. It was below budget, quality pun kurang. So I said, what, do you, what lesson do you learn out of this guy? And simple lesson is, you might have the best brain, but if you don't have barakah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the good. product would be good. So that was what I wanted to teach the people in Protona. And you, you, you can see you're proud, <laughs> but you must not forget, you know, what allow, make people buka hati untuk beli kita ni, Allah SWT. Betul. Betul kan? True. Kalau tuan din, tuan din, everybody in Malaysia, please don't buy pronton car. Mati kita. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. that's fundamental. Not because you're smart, not because the car is cheap. Betul lah. But because Allah SWT opens people. Yeah. That I believe, sorry. So that was a message that I want to tell the people about. Don't be too proud lah. Yes. Then we have to be humble in our beginning, go back to basic. And uh, I mean, that's, What I was trying to instill, you know, I mean, you want yeah. to go into organization, you want to leave something behind, you want to leave a lesson to yeah. start about, you know, <clears throat> not just about P&L, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so that when you leave, people, you want to remember something. During your stewardship, what do you remember? Uh, you know, I mean, today, like, what do you say? I'm a gamba guy. Yeah. Tak boleh, tadi dia diam, ha? Dua, tiga hari, go tengah dengan mesin ni, I feel rindu, I need to go down, I need to hear. And I actually go pasang taya, pasang pintu. I just want to learn, because one is a customer, your operator, you tak buat kerja, kan? Dia kerja pagi, 8, 5, 5 petang. Is he in pain or not? Dan kita yeah. senang nak komen kan cuba kita angkat cuba buat sini. Oh, yeah. buat sendiri. Oi, oh, letih dia. Yeah, yeah. Then say now yourself. So you need to then modernize your process to make sure that your people senang come out yeah. senang kerja. True. But you're not able to do that you know, by just listening to reports. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. yeah. And quality carbon in in Toyota when I was doing the MD of Toyota and Dassu will then inspect the car. Kunjung, dia sini check. So I did that in Pro 2. In Proton, bila I check, orang terkejut. Eh, apa MD? <laughs> eh, I want to check. <laughs> And I will see things that people don't see. see yeah. I say, why is this? Why does it get? Why is it get that good? Huh? Then baru orang tahu that I cannot do this anymore. Hmm. But you have to take that stewardship. Lah. 
Kalau orang dulu. nak gelenteng pun, uh, yeah, oh, yeah. I see my own eyes, who you want to gelenteng? That's very good point. Very yeah. good point. So. Mm. Orang tak boleh gelenteng. Mm. Because I've seen it. Mm. Uh, so, bila people present, you 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 already understand the facts. Mm. And, and say, no, don't, I don't believe you, what you're saying. Mm. And then, Sri, macam, I think after six years, kan, uh, you left Proton. Mm. And you went back to Petronas Dagang, kan? And I just... And nak tahu lah why why did you decide to leave uh, Proton? I think before that also ada a takeover by Highcom, right? The Arab by Arab yeah by by uh, was taken by Syed Mukhtar lah. Syed Mukhtar. Ah uh, yeah. And then yeah wh- why why did you decide to? Well, I mean you know um, when you are five or six years, the other macam each kid lah. <laughs> <laughs> a calling to say. Time to move on, mm. and uh, I mean, uh, not that you know, uh, and it it kind of triggered when after mm. being six and a half years in the company. But then, you were doing well, right? In yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, you are managing it. You you know, sales are good. Mm. We just launched a new car, but the new shareholder come in again. So I am thought myself, look, the new shareholder probably have their own plans, lah. And I'm the kind of guy, I saw Avisa, then I will speak my piece. Lah. Mm. So I said, maybe uh, let's give the opportunity for the new shareholder to have their own people. Lah. So I, I, mm. I, you know, talked a lot about it. You know, I said too, you know, I remember Ton Made was my advisor because yeah. uh, Prime Minister at that time was Najib. Mm. And because they wanted me to stay. Uh, he also predicted if uh, Sam Ota took over, you would, would, would leave also. <laughs> <laughs> so I, 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 I thought about it, you know, I, I asked a lot of people and of course my istikara. So I finally said, I want time to leave. Like, you know? mm. so I, I went to Sito and I gave a letter. I went to the chairman. Of course, Tone was not happy. Asked me to really consider uh, and I went to CPM. Said, is it one of the Yes. Said, do you have a job? I said, I don't know. Said, I don't know. <laughs> Memang tak ada kerja lah. I, I I just wanted to take a break lah. You know, and before I went to Petrona, I was an entrepreneur. Oh, I, wow. Yeah, I you know I was associated with this brand called Brainy Bunch, as you know. Oh, Brainy Bunch. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. I, I'm also a, I was a shareholder. My uh, my my sister yeah. goes there. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, you know I, we we built from a five campus uh, to now oh, become hundred yeah. campus. Oh wow! Oh, yeah, you are part I, of the yeah. Shareholder. I, I was part of the team. Like Fazil was one, but I was the chairman. I was also a shareholder. Then I start up a few other companies. Bio Alpha, I listed it uh, in the company. Uh, oh, wow. Then I was doing on my own like, entrepreneur. And then just how many do, years was the entrepreneur? That was about had? four years. Yeah. Oh. Then I, I oh, then I sat in the board of the bank. You know, I was a uh, board director of RSB Bank, RSB yep. Islamic. Uh, I mean, kena <laughs> kerja lah kita dia dia. But I at that point, I just want to discover entrepreneurship. Mm. Uh, and I then, of course, I started the EV commerce, yeah, yeah. the EV. You know, uh, so then you know the calling came from Petronas. Petronas, Tansi Wanzo was the, the, the president. CEO, president yes. Tuale was the EVP. Both of them were my <coughs> peers Senior. when I was in Petronas. Oh, yeah. peers, eh? Ah, satu group. Arif, Ratu Arif was my housemate no. <laughs> uh, in Sri Lanka and also in Canada. So they say, okay, Syed, why don't you come back? And together I say, I'm already done. Masa tu dah lima puluh lebih. I said, I don't want to do. I said, no, come back. Take take a contract. I want. They want to put me into downstream marketing. Mm. Downstream marketing ni is about Retail, dagangan. I was in charge of dagangan. I was supposed to be in charge of South Africa operation engine. We have about 1,000 stations, and also wow. the Petronas Lubicon, uh, which includes the Formula One. Yep. Oh. The relationship said, "Side, why don't you lead this as a VP at the group? This are all your business. Come and help do marketing and all that." So I said, mm, "Okay lah, very interesting." So I said, "Okay lah, for Tatsui and for Tato Arif, you know, friends, you pasal kan, and I like the challenge." I said, "Tumbuk itu dah itu menunggu kita nari lah. Let's try something different." Kan? So I, I took the role of Petronas as VP, and when the dagangan MD left, because he was assigned to another job, they were looking. Then Dan Sri said, "Say, you double head lah. <laughs> <laughs> double head, gaji sama." Lah. <laughs> I nak tanya juga berapa gaji usia tu tapi tak pelan. <laughs> so I said, okay lah. I mean, I, I, I again, it's always about me rising to the challenge. challenge. I said, okay, Dangan. So I said, Tan Sui, I said, Tan Sui, what do you want? I want Dangan to be the number one retailer to overtake Shell. Lah. I said, okay. It's quite a challenge lah. So I took the role as Dangan punya MD. And then, again lah, same principle as lah. 
Pro dua sama, proton sama. Going down to the ground, Going understand? The What's the problem? So I spend in dagangan. Pergi lah sisi minyak itu kerja my pastime. <laughs> so all all the sisi minyak dekat rumah saya semua takut lah. Then <laughs> 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 boy mesti kena main spare <laughs> kita kan. So I went, I went everywhere, the whole country. Understand? I talk mm. to customer, I talk to dealers. Mm. Uh, then I come back and say, okay, this are the pain point. Uh. So what I realize? Why does people go to Shell and not Petronas? So I went to Shell. Isi minyak. Lagi laju. Lagi laju. Dan masuk dalam... Before. Sisi minyak. Gedai kan. What's the difference? Pergi Petron. Pergi Caltech. Then we realize we have some weakness. Mm-hmm. Two weakness. One, the experience at the forecourt. Which pump mm-hmm. ni. Laju. Slow. Yep. Ini rosak yeah. kan. Pegang ni. Tangan berminyak. You yes. know, geli. Toilet. That is experience. And our experience was not very good. Then masuk ke Dan Mesra. Another experience. Pun tak bagus. Tak banyak option lah masa tu. Eh. Ah, no. So, but that's the reality. Hmm. Uh, but then, we all then sat down with Dato Alif and the team saying, how do we then change the experience? Very, I mean, it's a very, a process that we go through. Yep. Yep. For court, macam mana nak itu? Tukar mesin, buat automate, you know, yep. get the settle. Yeah, get suddenly, that. suddenly, uh, I saw the the shift. The shift out. quickly. Yeah. Yeah. I liked Shell uh, before. Then, so. minyak pun, black mustard. No. Kan? You, you see now, now yep. kan? Yep. Now, everywhere, cafe mustard. Yep. So, that was doing our time, right? Yeah, so then you see volume goes up, people coming back, you know, and oh, share pun that's a gempa, but it's it's not a rocket sign, but it's really going to the detail. Yeah, I mean that's fundamental in any business, like right? detail understanding where are the pain point. It's about that to see every pain point is an opportunity to improve, right? Yeah, so Correct. you address those pain point very clearly. It doesn't matter. But the only way to do it is to really go on the run. So I spend a lot of time. So some of you got the same thing. I go in South Africa when I go to Cape Town, Johannesburg, every quarter. I go to the station. Kenapa kan? But itu, paitam lah. Melayu lah kan? But they are different. So I, you cannot find the same mode. So very interesting. When I was in PLI, I was in charge. I was the chairman of PLI. The global will become business. We got operation in China, in Europe, in South Africa, in South America. So when I go and travel, the same thing. I talk. So my customer, my customer is about Mercedes Benz, BMW, the dealers, <laughs> the workshop kan. Mm. Why, why do you like Obrican? What is the service you like? Oh. So then we grew. So I managed to turn things around in PLA, in engine and then applying the same principle from same the, principle from the very everywhere. beginning. Yeah. Product visa, principle is about. Mm, it's about focus. Uh, it's about going on to the floor, understand the operation. It's about customer centricity. Focus on, and the rest is about management. Lah. People, yeah. you need to move people. Lah. Yeah. Adalah sikit, Tuhan bagi kebolehan. Asa, asa, I can talk and people will listen. Suara macam ni kot. Orang tengok tak kuat. Kalau tak buat kena lempang pula. Macam kuat ni. That's a skill that I've learned over time. Yeah. Is to make sure that you can address the audience. You know, mm. The way you deliver. High tone, low tone. Mm. Kan, dengan message. Marah pun ada motivate mm. pun ada yeah. then people believe at the end of the day what do you want in a leader mm. you want to trust your leader right yeah. and I remember juga dulu I tengok uh, I think you launched I can't remember which car but it was at convention center and then you did like a Steve Jobs your style it's alright uh, right. that was what I was famous for I yeah. was the first CEO in corporate Malaysia yeah. that did live yeah. without tax yeah and then oh. it was like a Steve Jobs style lah bro Steve diri atas stage <laughs> and And the voice, apa semua. So that was when I first really, like, oh, you know, this guy is something. Yeah, else. that's yeah. that's that. Uh, well, that was experience. Like, it was live, huh? Yeah, it, it was, was not recorded. Like, live and on I think TV. That time, Najib ke Tun was the Tone one. Tun and Najib was there. Yeah, they they yang buat the. Yeah, lah. Kan? Uh, I remember lepas tu kan Najib kata, eh, hey, say, you should become a politician. Ah, uh, <laughs> yeah. Actually, they be sick lah. Mati aku. Actually, that was one of the question I wanted to ask juga. Tak sih ada ke any mina nak masuk politik pula? Mina is always there lah. I, you know, as as a person, what you want to do and this late part of your career, sih kan? You you have a very colorful experience about corporate world. You you had a lot of success. There are also failures. I I got no doubt. I'm not saying it's always successful. But when you look at as a Malaysian, you you want to see and contribute in nation building. Yep, this always been my passion. I mean, because I travel quite a bit, I see people do. I say, why are we stuck in this mm. same thing? And 
and no offense to all the ministers lah. I mean, nanti politician politician, but they need technocrats lah. Yeah. So minat tu ada lah, but I know. I mean, you know, uh, and we, the circle that we are in, our parents kan. I think okay. Nah, jadi politician you have to different DNA lah. I I don't have that DNA lah. You know, I don't want to say <laughs> what's the DNA. The be susah lah jadi politician ni kan. And you you really have to sell you know and you know your time to the people kan. But I think mungkin politician bukanlah politician yang pergi bertanding ni. Mungkin yang dilantik macam yeah, Omar. Yeah, I, I mean the likes of Tukus Afro, yeah, Wahid yeah, Omar kan. Now I mean, yeah, I mean given opportunity today, if there's a call, I would take the challenge because to me, I, I want to make difference. And I think I can move things behind because hmm. I, I'm all the spin on self. And I think like you said, what's your purpose in life? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us reason for all the colorful things in life. There must be a reason. Yep. And It's in to make change to people. Again. Yeah. In your home, your, whole, your household, your community, and the ultimate to me, the test is to make a change for the nation and the Ummah. Hmm. To me, if I'm given that role, I would just take it without thinking. Yeah. Lah. Which which uh, ministry are you paling minat? Miti and transport. Miti and transport, eh? Yeah. Yeah. And education, lah. Kalau tiga, yeah. tak minat. Yeah. Yeah. So, so mungkin kalau, most... kalau PM tengah tengok, Yeah. <laughs> can, can Ataupun kalau orang yang tengah tengok ni Tolong hantar di shot kepada PM Yes <laughs> no, I mean there No lack of people are asking me to be I, I don't mention names lah But yep. Even the, the number I'm one sure, said At sure. one point in time um, But I, I just thought that You know I, I would I wouldn't Timing was not right lah mm. uh, but, but I think at this point it's a, it's a good time lah I mean If if a call for to contribute in the country, you cannot say no lah. I think yeah. the country needs the best brain, you know, and the best people. I mean, I have my own skill. I'm sure there are other people are better than me. But if I can be of help, that's why people ask me to help in organization, you know, in the government. You know, I sit a few task force. Yeah. I do, you know, because I mean that's what you are for, kan? At this yeah. stage of life, we start getting that tour, kan? I mean, you know, success. I mean, you, you don't need any more. I've come to level that enough is enough lah. Yeah. You know, I mean, what more can you do? Like, <laughs> there will never be enough. Yeah, dah cukup dah. EPF tu dah full lah. <laughs> yeah. Now it's time yeah. to give back. <laughs> yeah, it's it's about giving back to society, society. to yeah. people, yeah. to the country. Yeah, and I think that's why 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 no, the reason kenapa I sangat sangat hormat Tan Sri lah. And I remember what, macam uh, when I first started Mutiara, kita pindah ke office kan. Hmm. I tried to invite Tan Sri lah untuk datang kan. And he was there. He wow. came. He came for my lo- the launching yeah, of yeah, my uh, office. Apa wow. semua. And today, bila I jemput datang uh, kita punya podcast pun Tan Sri, you know, <coughs> tak ada banyak hesitant lah untuk datang. So I feel like, yeah, you you are really kind and also you banyak Masya bantu Allah. lah orang muda ni. Sebab mungkin you nampak kita ni yeah. tengah mencuba. Kan? Yeah. So you know, Ashraf, I I remember three things that I mean my Ustaz mentioned to me lah. It's just maybe for the. For the audience. Yeah, for audience. Tiga benda that you boleh bawa ke akhirat kan. Satu, uh, sedekah jariah. Yep. yep. Yelah, whatever we can mampu, we can, some people can give more kan. Yes. Kedua, anak yang soleh. Yes. We hope and I pray, oh my children, biar anak soleh lah kan. <laughs> Itu pun tak boleh guarantee kan, you never know. Yep. Tomorrow yep. you die, wallahu ala ba'adam yep. hakim adil, I think we have taught yeah, them well I enough. Tapi I think they, they're quite Inshallah. Yeah. <laughs> But third is, ilmu yang memberi manfaat. 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 Betul. Yes. That, you can control. Mm. Today. Yes. Yeah. So what I can control, I want to give back. Hmm. And, and so, and I believe my journey daripada dulu pergi from one state to the other, colorful like a US, high comp, pronto, pronto, there is a reason why Purpose. Allah sent to God. Hmm. It's today for me to give this conversation that we're having. Yep. Yeah. And that's why when people ask me to give talk, Ashraf, I, ne- Ishraf, I never turn them down. Hmm. Barely. Hmm. University, you know, intern, government, you know, private sector, I, I like because to me it's about sharing experience. Sharing If I can make a chain, you know, and influence life of others, I believe that my, you know, <laughs> my father akan mendapat berganja lah. You know, that's what I I like to do, you know, yeah. because and balance the life, you, you you want to be successful in dunia and akhirat. And that's, yep. I think yeah. that is, must be the obsession. Kan? But that's the face of what I want to do next. You know, I mean, I don't want to be a corporate world anymore because I want to help. But enough is enough. All the publicity, malah nanti kita all the publicity. <laughs> kan. I, I want to know. That's why I, I, I'm close to the majlis, to the malls. Mm. And until today, one of the public speaking ever you have get a chance, huh? Ashraf, I, so I suggest is baca kutubah kat masjid would be the, the ultimate. No, oh, you've done that. I've done yeah. that every, every three months. I would do it in my masjid. Yeah. Wow. I'll do it in my masjid. I would do it in university masjid. I do it at you know, UTM in masjid. And if you other masjid. Ini bukan bangsa, bukan majlis, bukan benar-benar. But it's about delivering 
a tax and when you want people to captivate to captivate so my KPI kalau masuk kat mimbar kan tak nak orang tidur tak nak orang baca phone hmm. that must be your KPI yeah, people, people they want you to listen to you hmm. so that's really training you know how you deliver your sermon tapi kalau semua orang semua <laughs> How are we? So I and the Mimba, that's my KPI. And I guess very satisfied if I deliver and people are watching me and listening to me. Yeah, yeah. And you can see the audience, can you can see. Oh, that's, and that's, and of course, about cleaning up yourself. Like, kita ni banyak dosa kan, bahaya lah, bukan muka. Yeah. And just clean up. But that's, that's what I like to do. You know, I'm happy and I have a wife that supports me. You know, Alhamdulillah. You know, kind of a, as my parents are there. That's so you need to have an ecosystem to support you lah. You know? Yeah. yeah. And I think uh, also why we started apa cerita ni pun hmm. actually because of this three pillar and the last pillar tu lah which is nak sebarkan ilmu yang Correct. bermanfaat kan. Correct. Hmm. Beneficial so, knowledge. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Sharing knowledge. Yeah. Alright. So actually my my next question uh, Tan Sri is because I I used to work for Riyad right? Uh, hmm. Tan Sri Riyad Smart. So it's supposed to ask you why do you think it's important for a leader to always go on ground? But I think the whole Uh, session we have today <laughs> yeah. is Very actually clear. center yeah. on yeah. that so there's no point uh, me asking so I think maybe we can move towards the D next yeah your yeah. your current current tenure Carol. and yeah yeah I think yeah penglibatan Tan Sri sangat uh, apa dalam D next ni sangatlah signifikan hmm. kepada pemain-pemain bursa kan yep and baru ni uh, D next juga berjaya peroleh lanjutan kontrak penyelenggaraan dan sokongan perisian serta penambahbaikan aplikasi sistem pencukaian bersepadu. <laughs> Quite mouthful lah. <laughs> Ini researcher kita <laughs> yang saya tanya. Bernilai 11.2 juta daripada LHDN kan. So, apakah misi DNEX ni di masa hadapan? And maybe you can also tell us uh, a bit about yeah. DNEX punya, how did you get involved with DNEX? And if, my, if I may add a bit also Tantri, is that I, I, I was reading the annual report and all that for DNEX. And I saw the trajectory that when you came in, how it impacted from a few hundred millions to 1.4 billion in terms of uh, revenue in yeah. 2022. Yeah, I think, you, could you know, I mean, that's a very good question. I mean, this is, uh, again, a classic example how you want to change the realignment of the company. Mm. You know? So when I came in, I was given a very simple task. <laughs> the next uh, was, you know, I mean, a very IT company, um, very small portfolio or customer range. And I think the business was at risk mm-hmm. because we rely a lot on government contract. And so the shareholders and the board wanted to look at new growth opportunities. And so the question is, where do we go? Sustainable. Where do we go? Because summer, you know. So when I came in, I look, you know, what we are doing today and I need to look what is the next future growth lah, in the next five to ten years. So of course, IT, I think, still going to be remain lah. Question have to you just have to reinvent the wheel by adapting all the new technology AI yep. data you know uh, data analytics and so on. So that capability I we build and we do now do just do government we also do private sector. Yep. So it's balancing our portfolio lah and trying to improve margin in terms of high value add service. And today, in the government is doing many IT initiatives. I think we are in a good position. We are now you know, negotiating and bidding a few contracts. Inshallah, I think we are in a good position. So that still be our call. Like. We cannot run from where, how we exist. I want to thing. But what's the next new horizon? I think one of the significant things that I came in that turned the, the needle, like, is right, Asha, when you say, is when we acquired Setera, the semiconductor yep. from Kazana. Yes. Because... Going forward, today people talk about semiconductor, mana, you know, everything that you use, pakai microchip kan, and yep. the number of everything. volume, everything mm. it becomes you know, more. Apparently, kita punya, ni pun ada <laughs> microchip ke tak? Quantity, <laughs> it becomes more high superior. And Citera is in that space. So we bought over Citera from the government, we bid, you know, and then I go to Citera every, you know, every week at one point in time, I spend three days there. Sama juga, Gemba, Tudung Mawa, yes. talk to the shop Same law, thing. and turn the thing around. So, But that time, Citera was, was not a... Uh, prop- well, I mean, I mean, to be fair, I mean, Kazana owned the company, and I think we came in the right time, and we put a lot of focus, lah. but... Mm-hmm. In any business, the cycle today, the cycle is going down. Of course, we are also a bit suffering in yep. terms of our numbers, but it's going up again it's, because it's we are business. shifting from the, uh, the device, the, what you see, you know, today, 
the demand is less, we're now going to the emerging technology, which is for electric vehicle, AI computing, mm -hmm. data warehousing, and all that, where they require superior high fast microchip. That's what we do. We don't produce the chip, we use the wafer that we send our customer. Our customers are multinational, yep. Google, Broadcom, yep. names of it. I mean, we cannot name because it's confidential. Yep. Right? But these are the people. So we learn that. So that's what I did for the last two years to change the profile of the DNA. To change profile, senang, you know, kadang, uh, because you got the money, you got the strategy. Yep. But to change the culture becomes that's more important. The... That's the other. How to shift? Orang selalu mengharapkan government now to become more energetic, more agile, more... The business you know, process pun dah lain. lain. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so that's where again, I spend time by, you know, going sama lah. Kat Sitera sama, go down. I speak to everyone. I do frequent town hall. Mm. But I takut apa, Asya. If I were to pass you a meeting, today, kalau I bisik ke Asya satu, Asya bisik ke Isra, Isra bisik ke itu kan. Dia dah jadi lain. I, I can tell you, but the time point dah lain kan. <laughs> So I'm, I fear the message doesn't go across. So the best way to me about communication is you have to oh, speak. Direct. Yeah. And not only you have to speak, but you People also have to must listen. have the ability to listen. Mm -hmm. Seek first to understand before you be understood. Yep. Mm -hmm. So that's very fundamental communication again. So you speak, boleh lah bagi, tapi kena lah. <laughs> listen juga orang gitu. Kadang cakap-cakap, tak pernah dengar orang kan. Mm. So you have to listen what the people are saying. So I spend a lot of time. So that's about how you want to transform a certain culture. So that's what the process I'm doing now. And we hope, you know, DNX will be a vibrant company. Now, the next phase of DNX is about going overseas. So we've signed an MOU in Saudi. We're now going to Qatar, mm. doing the same thing. We are now going to invest in another fab with another partner. I know I'm, I've been, you know, appointed as advisory panel to the semiconductor task force of the government. We give a few suggestions. We want Malaysia to be the hub. So DNX is a local Bumi Putra company. Is this that space? Not many people can claim I'm in mean, the global semiconductor. You, you compete the like of TSMC, yeah. SMIC, global funding. I don't want among the next thing. To me, it's 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 an accomplishment. It's, yeah, you know, to be in that space, you know. And when you do that, you deal with international clients. So I tell, I was in Cetera two weeks ago. I told her, you are lucky among the Malaysian to be in this. You should be proud. Mm. and have hope and the high hope in the company and give you back Babu, so the thinking is Baru different it's not like kaya pagi bukan bagi kerja kan it's not become national agenda kan sense of pride in what you do so mm. when you do that you know and when I mean, you have the reaction I think it's quite clear lah. but people always say lah, so it's, like, it's not always about the plan it's always about the execution yep boleh ke buat kan people ah, believe and yeah. boleh buat is about people lah. I I tell you one thing that I've been trained by Toyota I, I think this is a very it's about problem solving mm -hmm. Toyota kata Israel Israel kan you nak solve problem tanya why kena tanya why tujuh kali why 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 <laughs> pelik kan apa nak tanya why tujuh kali why sekali Toyota, cukup kan <laughs> I give you an example eh? ok if I go to a kilang I I tell mesin rosak kan so I tanya eh adik, adik kenapa mesin rosak Oh, boh tak ada spare part lah. Kan? So, I kata, okay, beli spare part lah. So, solve what? Rosak, beli spare part, mana solve? Toyota kata, no. That's not the way you solve problem. Toyota kata, Dede, kenapa mesin rosak? Tak ada spare part lah. Kenapa tak ada spare part? Tak ada budget. Kenapa tak ada budget? Oh. Tak ada duit lah. Kenapa tak ada duit? Tak summit. Kenapa tak summit? Takut. Ha, ha, ha. That is the Takut problem. Takut ke boy. So, the problem is apa? Aku gak bos. Aku gak bos. Exactly. Different approach of solving problem, right? Yeah. So in life, in problem, in business pun, sama Tapi juga. Kenapa takut gak bos? Bos garang. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so, exactly. So, typically, the problem is always about the people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you tackle the problem in any company that you go surface, it's not sustainable. Mm. Because the root, punca tu, you tak selesai lagi. Mm. So that is why problem solving in any company, even when you run the business, it's always about problem. You've got a problem. But ask that question. Why? 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 Kenapa? They say, oh, that's all. It could be people. It could be process. It could be equipment. Mm. But when you go very surface, you you, you won't get uh, You won't get. You know, oh, sekejap lah. Batu benda tu akan berulang lagi. Mm. And that's why problems keep on repeating in it's every organization. Way. I mean, that's something that I learned and I still today, I still practice the same thing. Yeah. So that's what I'm doing now in the next, you know, realigning the business portfolio. Of course, stock market and people are cutting time. To me, I'm not distracted. Lah. Yeah. I'm a very focused person. I need to go and align myself. I mean, in any business, there's always ups and downs. 
Yeah, mm. you know, but you just have to reinvent yourself very quickly, you know, and adapt to the you know environment. IT is very mm. rapid, semiconductor very rapid. Of course, we also got oil and gas, yeah. very capital intensive, you yep. know, where the price of oil fluctuates. Correct. So the parameter, you know, you have to many different parameters that you have to juggle, you know, mm. you know, currency now four point seven, lagi lagan. So uh, all these dynamics, you as a as the as the number one guy, you need to manage all this. Mm. So yeah, I mean it's, it's fun, you know, but it also has its challenges, like you know, but the pengujung pengujung ni, you know, you just want to take a different different role, lah. Like, right? <laughs> I think it's interesting, lah. Like. Actually, True. at first, but like, I think about the next, I tak faham sangat apa the next buat hmm. because it's very complicated punya hmm. ni kan. But now I I understand lah like, what what is all about kan. So yeah. okay, Tan Sri, we're going to move on to uh, the last segment, hmm. uh, which is. Uh, we call it interesting questions lah. Kalau mm. kepada setengah orang tu, kita panggil hard question. Tapi sebab kita tengok, tak dapat lah Tan Sri punya controversial. Quite clean. Tak ada. Slate. Tak ada controversial. So, kita True. tak ada hard question lah. So, Tan Sri, uh, dalam perjalanan kerjaya yang luar biasa ni, mesti ada saat-saat yang Tan Sri harus buat keputusan yang berat kan. Boleh tak uh, Tan Sri mungkin bring us back to maybe one of the decision yang berat yang Tan Sri harus buat and macam mana Tan Sri mengatasi dia? Well, I mean, there's a few lah, but just to single out maybe two lah, maybe. Uh, one, when I was in Proton. Proton is unique lah, as well, as well, right? It's a brand that people love and also people hate, hate. at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> so you you are exposed, you know, to the public. And of course, you're also exposed to the politicians and the leaders of the country. Um, one of the difficult things that it's always about managing stakeholder lah. I, I always say I have four bosses in Proton. Mm. I got the chairman of the board. I got the chairman Kazana at that time. Kazana was the shareholder. I got the prime minister, my ultimate shareholder, which I meet every three months when we have to send report card. Then I have my advisor, <laughs> Don Mathias, my boss. <laughs> and we are being a listed company. And you know, myself, it's right, listed company, get the governance, you know, uh, yep. proper, you know, things that we have to disclose and not disclose. Yep. And I'm the group MD. The buck stops at me. There are few situations where the four are not aligned, mm. and I anticipate. Mm. And they like especially the advisor and as well, like So when someone asks me to do something, what do I do? You know, I cannot put in a minute. I'm being instructed, mm. but that request might not be in the best interest of the company. One particular uh, thing was, you know, I'm not going to go into detail. I had to make a decision. It, it caused a commitment, monetary commitment. But I didn't do this. My there, there'll be a crisis. <laughs> crisis about shakeholder, kata bergaduh, kata tak tu pasal. So I just I was told to diffuse the thing, which means I had to make a decision which might not be the best interest. Question: How did you do it? And you know, so that was very difficult. So I, because I had a good chairman that I consulted the chairman, so I actually made that decision, invested in something, you know, because it avoided a conflict that could potentially could be very, very more damaging, more damaging lah, at that point of time yep. for the sake of the bigger ecosystem. And I said, this is not something I want to get into lah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it was a very difficult between principle, principle right, and what's right, what's wrong. Right? Mm. A very grey line that you. Oh, that was to me. I I can still remember the conversation that I had in coming that decision. But it makes me a wiser person. At that point of time. Ultimately, how did you decide? Huh? How did you? You went with your instinct. I, I I I. Which is the bigger problem that I want to yeah. avoid? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> both have, both will probably put me in hot soup. Which is the lighter of evil, lah. So I took the lighter one. Oh. I, I do, then I think I can mitigate this. But this it goes beyond me. Tak leh ni ah. And so I had to tap ayala. Why do I take that risk? You know, and it affects other people. Can this something that I can manage? So that's the. Principle always lah kan, least pass, pass of least resistance. Hmm. Yang senang impact, you buat itu lah. Kalau you nak pergi tempat itu, itu you must be have, <laughs> nak kena ada sword and shield <laughs> to go to that kan. So that's one one uh, incident that I I remember very clearly. 
I think the other incident that really matured me was when I was in Pantonas, when COVID-19 came in. Imagine, you kerja you jual minyak, you jual lubricant. Yeah. Today, all government say Stop. nobody drives wow. car. I mean, your business is zero. You know? Yep. <laughs> Everything stopped dead. Min, kerja minyak tak boleh jalan, your ecosystem kilang tak boleh jalan. But, the 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 government services needs to run kita polis ke jalan so how do you manage that in covid i remember i was sitting in home start because work from home eh? i had to manage malaysia siari petang i had to manage europe because i got factories in turin in spain and in india malam i had to manage south albany america and us Kilang kat Buenos Aires, you know, in, you know, Argentina and Brazil. Also, gonna do. And I had people dying in the factories of COVID-19. Mm. And I was the I was the chairman of the board of the three Crazy. companies. Imagine <laughs> the weight on your shoulder when you say, "Oh, mati." They say, "How your 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 staff ni gak gak children, family, and and people that's gonna get to work, you know." And then I call a town hall online, give them comfort. But the town hall, you have you had to do. Oh, banyak. <laughs> yeah. every, every factory town hall. Every Brazil, punya oh. hilang. India, punya hilang. Tu ni lah town hall because they want to hear. Don't worry, we'll yeah. give you children. We'll take care of the family. I know it's difficult. I know you fear for your health, but we need to commit to this because we got mm-hmm. customers that have to wait. Oh, I tell you, I just can't get my salary. Because it's not good. Yeah. Spanish, they can't. I don't But it really then tells you about crisis management. Yeah, and this you know COVID nineteen is unprecedented. Yeah. And I had to make calls, you know, that cost money, that also made these people discomfort. But the bug stops at me. I need to make the call. Mm. And and we have to report to Transit President and for the sake of the ecosystem, I need to do. And, you know, if I look behind me, I could have do things better. Lah, you know, but running the plan could cost people's life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you want to take it on your heart. You know, but you if you don't run the plan, You Profit, know, like economic. Like. I mean, the whole system in Europe, <laughs> in South Africa, tak ada minyak macam mana tu kan? Nak tak nak, you handle like pasal lah. Orang, yeah. uh, and you put people at risk, you know. I mean, mm-hmm. it's your call that you have to. Oh, I thought I said, I didn't want to make that call. I said, but I that don't have a choice. And, and true enough, one or two people did have COVID, passed away. Mm. So you you have to live with that conscience, you know, that decision, but And this time, your your conscience will be clear. You make a decision for the bigger good, mm. and, and uh, but those are consequences that you probably have. And of course, we make sure that the family is taken care of, and you know, send people, manage them properly. You know, uh, but alhamdulillah, I mean, we we survived that crisis. So those are the two things, lah. You know, so that I think over time, and I, of course, there are many other, you know, you know, you know, colorful example. You know, but that's story, lah. You know. Mm. <laughs> All right. So my next question, uh, Tan Sri, I think uh, as someone who's reached the pinnacle of corporate success, right? What is your perspective on work-life balance, and uh, how have you managed this throughout your demanding career, especially with all this, like how you explain, <laughs> right? Actually, I I struggle lah, uh, Ashraf, Ashraf, and work by balance. I was I'm very committed and work, you right? Know, work. Hard punya lah, mm-hmm. you know, kita work like a mad dog lah. <laughs> Gila-gila punya gila. Gila-gila. <laughs> and I mean, I started an engineer kan. Never in my life wanted to, you know, to become a CEO where I am. Nak dapat pangkat Tan Sri pun tak nak terfikir lah. But all this, Allah punya rezeki. But I I now realise that, you know, in work by balance satu, you need to manage the time of work and your family lah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm I'm lucky. Yeah, I got a wonderful wife, Kajan, uh, as you know, auntie. Then who understands, you know? There are times when I'm at work, dia lah become driver, dia lah become mm. technician kat rumah. <laughs> Semua dia buat kan. I mean, she hold the responsibility, you know, and you know, I, I, uh, and nothing can do to pay her for all the sacrifices that she had to make, and including my children, you know. And I was so busy trying to be a father and a boss. Uh, you know Adam, Adam yep. you know, yep. uh, and Adam can tell you story. And this one time, this is when I was in Ponton, Adam nak beli basikal lor. This is betul cerita. I was so stressed kat kerja, kat tengah makan, ada dinner, and Adam kata, Dad, I want to buy a car, I want to buy a basikal. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, buat, buat proposal, 
Then he walk away. I go back to my work and then they complain ke auntie kan. You know mom, I wanted to buy a bicycle. You know what dad tell me? Write a proposal. What the? Then malam balik, you know, then auntie call me. Hey, Sang, do you know what you told Adam? Just not. <laughs> what, what, what are you telling him? You nak beli bicycle? Beli beli lah. No, you ask him to write a proposal. So I know, oh, wow, wow, goodbye. I said, hey, yeah, here, my son, who's only 15, you know, write a proposal. I tell him, crazy, <laughs> gila kan. Uh, so I realized, you know, it's like I'm just too obsessed with work. You know? <laughs> Did you actually meant it or? No, I tak sengaja. Tak, tak lah. sengaja, become that, that, that routine. That oh, okay. So, <laughs> point is, I was busy trying to be a dad or boss. I forgot to it's be like, his friend. It's already like, Hmm. So I spend after that I realize then I then I start being a friend lah you know lepak dengan kawan-kawan dia hmm. go out you know and spend and keeps me you know down yeah, skill yeah, yeah. Yep. yeah then of course the other one is I'm I you know I I everybody has stress as we talk about this morning kan yep macam macam lah my only break from stress is I'm closer to the masjid. Hmm. Uh, that's another life balance that I do yeah. so and I, in fact uh, when I went to the masjid they were panggil masjid Syed Zainal <laughs> 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 uh, really, yeah? I was a Nazir president for 10 years yeah. Yeah, over time and I've done a lot of things you know, but yeah. it's just giving the community but that keeps me mm. uh, grounded and you are there every day also right insyaAllah subuh without fail kalau uh, I'm in, in KL kalau I travel tak ada lah but I'm there to doing things I mean as a president you need to do community work you know about program you know uh, upgrade the facility and I've been doing for the last 11 years uh, but that keep me balanced lah you know and then of course pergi ceramah-ceramah just like your parents you know we do and, but so so you need to have the best of all lah you know kalau cakap dunia saja it never end lah nothing to be enough kan Islam Islam kan yep tak mudah cukup. Kita manusia memang lah. Sifat kita, fitrah kita, cuma nak lagi kan. But you have the akhirat, that keeps you balanced lah. You know? And today I'm a much better person. Dulu pandang barang lah kan. kan? But now I, I realize, you know, and, and Alhamdulillah my parents are very important. I'm what I am today, I can share you. It's not because I'm smart. Work hard under, but because bekan doa my parents and my bukan family dia. and the people that I have. I don't want, I, I, I guarantee you that's the, the reason why. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So when, when, when you think in that way, You you get grounded very easily. Mm. You don't get lost in this publicity, you know, the glamour that you have. But like in it, your lifetime, pernah tak you get you ter lari track ataupun get overwhelmed with all this success? Of course, pernah. Very very easy. Kan orang semua, eh hey, tansi tansi, orang macam ni di sini kan, you dek oh gila we kan. But my my parents taught me well. Uh, I'm a very simple person. I got a simple rule when I go to Majlis, when I in any company. My food must never be different from the other people that eat. Must be the same. Mm. I prefer to eat like anybody. I don't want to have a special dome. And kalau queue, I want a queue. You know, because that's a message they want to be. I, I, because the Tansi is just a name. But and then you are the person. So I go, I'm going to Banji in Kelantan. I go and tolong Banji in Kelantan 2014. I stay. I stay in auntie. We stay in the Kema. Mm. Helping the people. I said, don't stay in hotel. But there's no protocol. So people who knows me, knows me for what I am. You know? But you're right. Kadang-kadang lah, kita manusia bahasa kan banyak kelemahan. Kan? Uh, yeah. Terbawa-bawa habis kono. Then, then bagi masjid balik, ah, okay, I'm just another hmm. person kan. Sebab tu hmm. pentingnya ada that, that home Point base tu kan. You, you need to put it back. You know, you run family, you love the people that surround you. And then the day, you are what you are today because of the people you interact with, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that most the character. So I need to have balance lah. Kalau aku nak jadi macam ni, macam ni lah. Hero-hero. Hero-hero <laughs> kan. <laughs> ya, tak betul, tak betul lah kan. <laughs> Jadi macam ni, macam ni. So I have a better. But sometimes there exist conflicts between the two mm-hmm. where you balance. Them. Like today, for example, I'm a corporate man. I drive for financial gains, profitability, bottom line. And and I also sit in the Majlis Agama Islam. Mm-hmm. We run a big organization, but we're not measured by monthly. We measured by how many asnaf that we have. And so I... Objectives are different, you know. You spend money <laughs> with two different objectives. And so, now why two becomes very important. So, 
That's why I, I'm quite clear. Like, everywhere I go, I am. But when I do, my niat is very clear. Uh, but ni lah, all this benda yang kita belajar lah. So, I mean, dulu pun, kita zaman-zaman jahilah pun semua. Lah. Mm. We all went to the same old kan. But I got no regrets. Yep. My colourful character in the university shapes me on today. Uh, but those are the past. You know, I want to go forward and not get the dark. Senior citizen, the senior ni kan. Dan umur 60 lebih ni. Oh, dah 60 lebih eh? Ada kan yang 60 tak? Tak, tak, tak. One year younger than my dad. Oh, right. 67. I'm 62. 62. 62. 62. Oh, you're yeah, dead. 63. 63. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm 62. This year. So exactly. But you so. look still like oh, still in the early 50s, ah. Don't think I'm going to get old. No, but I I come to a point that this is this, the the next phase of your life. Can mm. I always have this five years vision of me, you know, and said, you know, when when I where where I'm going to be in the next five years. Yeah. So I took uh, I when I'm 60, I said where I'm going to be in 65. That it means for me in 65, I I have it. I have a clear understanding where I'm going to be, yeah. the person I want to be. So I want to aim to be that person. Uh. Yeah, which leads us to our uh, next and also almost last question. Now, where do you see like what's your, next? Yeah, what's next for for Tansri Said Zainal? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like I said, like, I mean, I'm very philosophical in you know in understanding where I am today I believe one thing Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala bila kita dilahirkan tiga benda Allah bagi yang tetapkan uh, hak tarikh kita akan mati uh, jodoh kita yes. dan rezeki kita dah ditetapkan so all this is my rezeki that I think Allah have put me for a reason because work hard, hard adalah but to accumulate all this vast wealth of knowledge There must be a reason. And over the last couple of years, I discovered what that reason is. It's for me, is to lead a community and to make life better for the Ummah in the capacity that I am. Either I'm a corporate leader, I'm a politician. Mm. So right now, a lot of my, of my work, uh, Ashraf now, I want to do corporate dakwah. Mm. Corporate dakwah. That's my you know tagline. So that's why I, I want to go and I read Qutbah in many masjid because mm-hmm. I want to say I could be a successful corporate man and yet to be good in the world. Because some people say, some Allah people Allah say Allah. you cannot mix the both. Yeah. Then the reality is no. Mm. And so you can still be successful but still you do the things that you want to do in the community. And I took a lot of pain and effort to do that. So to answer your question, my next video is now about giving back. In everywhere to my children, you know. I mean, you know, I I help as I mentioned. I had people start up, people like you. Kan? Yep. Kalau orang tanya advice, I would do. And the little ilmu that I have, I I can mentor. I mentor, and I do mentoring a lot of people. I give to my community, you know. And I'm like a trench suban jaya. Oh, nama macam kita ni meyer kan? I mean, people expect you to do things, so you go, you give, yep. you know, talk, you go, uh, and then. The government, the like the appointed in the majlis, the task force, yeah. and I, I, I like to give talks. Mm. I was a chairman of UITM for about three years, yeah. and today I give talk to universities. And I hardly say no, because I think that's what my destiny is. You know, kita sebagai khalifah di bumi Allah ni ada sebab yang kita dapat. And and to me, that's to be is my destiny lah. And I hope when Allah banyak umur, banyak umur. When Allah mm. takes back. I like to be known to be that person that has given back to the society. You know, get the ambit saja tak kunci orang kan? And but the the, 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 the things I do, you if you have control, you do that. I'm sure all both of you one day will be in that position. Sure, sure. We always must remember, Allah tatu tak akan bagi satu kita benda yang kita tak mampu buat. Mm-hmm. It's a ujian. Mm-hmm. Cuma kita underestimate ourselves. Mm-hmm. Yep. But when we berjaya, Allah also asks us to give back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not what you think. So you remember these two things. In everything that you do, I think you should have confidence. And, and Because Allah tak zalim, kita yang zalim. Mm-hmm. We That underestimate ourselves. Kan? Oh, Allah kenapa, aku kena, kenapa, aku merana. Eh, hey, there's a reason why you have to look at the bright side. I'm a positive person. I'm never yeah. not a negative person in life. Right now. So I know it too lah. I mean, I don't know. I hope I still be panjang umur, waski, trying to help other people to do this. Yeah. And the famous quote from Spiderman: "With great power comes, comes great, great responsibility." Spiderman. Alright, that's it. Okay, our last uh, word of advice for for the audience. Can mm-hmm. maybe have kata kata mas untuk untuk kita punya audience. Last word of advice. I, I think you know my my advice is first of all you know you as any individual lah. 
tak kisahlah people masih ala tansi cakap senang lah kan hmm. you get yeah many people get opportunities some people don't uh, but you must always uh, always think that there are always people that's worse off than you you know don't always be negative in your thinking number two always give your best in what you do nothing come easy in life with success come a lot of failures I've failed a lot of my time with success to get successful you have to work hard so working hard is a given lah Hmm. Tapi kadang-kadang orang muda ni Semua nak cepat Senang kan? There's no Shortcut to success That one you have to be prepared lah yep. This journey in life Comes with a lot of You know hmm. Hardship uh, If you build it resilient Alhamdulillah I had a, a Very interesting background That being my journey But you kena tahan diri lah Kena cepat Cepat putus asa Give up hmm. Hmm. Nak bunuh diri lah Nak hmm. bunuh diri lah Nak pergi minum ah, give up. Tak boleh And I, I keep telling my children You never give up But you must be focused On what to do The other one is, of course, you have to be thankful. Lah. Syukur kepada Allah SWT. Kan? I mean, for Thank whatever you. reason, there's always worse people. Kita tengok ke Palestine, ke Palestine lagi kan. Yeah. Who are we to complain? True. Kan? So, we be syukur kepada Allah and be thankful to your parents. Uh, and be successful, like, I just like Riyadh and I saw the podcast. I need a very strong ecosystem to support. Lah. Mm-hmm. And who are your ecosystem? Mm-hmm. Obviously, your parents. Your family, you have a wife, your children. I mean, for that, I'm ever adapted to them, lah. You know, I will not be where I am today. Mm-hmm. And of course, your friends that mold and shape the way you think. So it's always about the choice. Mm-hmm. You need to make the right choices in life. You know, and sometimes you make the wrong choice. It's okay, and but you know, but you have to learn quickly. But hopefully, mm-hmm. over time, you get the wisdom to make better choices in life because life is about a journey, lah. Every journey requires a certain decision. I make, as I wish, that you got many mm-hmm. decisions, you know. And yeah, every decision, I ask in principle. I'm an engineer. I train my facts. Then I seek divine help. Mm-hmm. They don't have the Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And yep. Allah ni maha pemantu, maha pemurah. Kalau mm-hmm. kita nak doa, kita minta. Insyaallah Allah akan dengar permintaan yep. kita. That's the guidance that we have. One more. Mm-hmm. What more do we need? You know. Yeah, I mean, yeah. God gives the brain to akal to pikir, but at this time, you need to rely on me. Yeah. So if you have the balance in that. I think it's true. I think everybody out there. I think you have. You need to find your own purpose in life. I find my own purpose in life. It's not been easy for me, but when I do with with power come great response. The amanah too besar. Mm-hmm. So you need to then ask yourself, what what's your amanah? Whether yeah. you are a manager, a devil, logi pun ada amanah kan? Mm-hmm. Make sure you see now. Kalau tidak dia boleh lagi orang dah makan tak sampai put amanah. Mm-hmm. So you need to understand that context, how you fit into the bigger system. Do not think you're just small, you are insignificant. Kan? Kalau semua orang jadi, semua jadi CEO, siapa nak jadi kerja ke bawah? True. Yeah. Kan? But that's what Allah SWT buat dalam you know, dunia ni. Everybody has a role to play. Beautiful, so yeah. play your role in play the best well. way you can. Play the best, well. The yeah. best you can. The best you can yeah. be. That's my advice lah. Right. Yeah. So with that, thank you so much, Tansri. I think this session has been one of the most inspiring session that we've yep. had inspiring and, and educational educational yeah. and I think your experience ni super colourful actually kalau ikutkan banyak sangat benda yang kita tak dapat touch base but <laughs> we have, we have uh, apa dah cakap dekat 2 yeah. jam dah and mm. I think you know I hope that a lot of people can learn lah from from this I hope so yeah, hope so, from this so. session and you know to be the best person it's not impossible and to, to I think you've Almost conquered the world, lah. Not just Malaysia, <laughs> kan? Yeah, you've I'm, done so I'm, many. I'm, I'm lucky, lah. Yeah, I can be called, say, I'm an international person, global person. Yeah, I've been and, to. And you know, banyak orang pikir kita orang Melayu kita ni lemah, kita ni tak boleh. Oh, itu tak betul. That's, yeah, uh, but, we can do it. Yeah, but it, you are a prime example of actually Melayu ni sebenarnya kita boleh go global we can be the best and we can compete with exactly the, the, the you can compete the with the, all the multinational yes. I mean I've been there I've stayed on that platform we can yeah. do it yeah, yeah. agree so I think I'm super grateful juga thank you so thank much you, for Asha. being here thank you, I'm very for honored yeah. keep up the good work inshallah you know, use this platform to communicate and share with yeah. the audience yeah. so yeah. Yeah. maybe any last word from you yeah for me also it has been an honor uh, Tan Sri thank you so much especially because I look up to Riyadh because I learned so much in the past six years I was with him and I know the sauce mm. being able to to <laughs> add, like, <laughs> part, 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 uh, partly yeah. I'm of, sure he's also contributed of course so definitely by himself yeah. but partly it's also you know it's a it's an honor to yeah, be like, able boss to kepada boss kepada eh? boss kepada <laughs> boss <laughs> yeah. and also I want to say to the viewers like you don't have to be a an entrepreneur at the start but you can also trans trans transfer or transform from a 
yeah. corporate then do mm. just just yeah, bukan, bukan like maksud you bekerja hari ni sampai bila-bila you kena yeah. kerja yeah. Yeah, correct. It's, yeah. A, it's a journey that you have to go through yes. yeah, but yes. the point is be the best at whatever you're doing version. and from there then people will will apa, correct, nampak correct. and that's how you grow in in yes. life kan? inshallah so, if I have an event I'll try to invite Tan Sri so no <laughs> 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 <Your> marketing no <laughs> <laughs> alright so thank okay. you so much everyone thank and, you so much uh, please uh, help us subscribe and make sure you guys share this with everybody kan okay, ni Tan Sri pun orang masjid so share juga dengan orang, orang masjid, masjid. Yeah, supaya <laughs> semua orang pun dapat this uh, benefit Manfaat. from correct, from correct, this correct. whole session so thank you so much insyaAllah kita akan jumpa di minggu hadapan yes. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh don't forget wabarakatuh. to subscribe okay. like and share yeah. Assalamualaikum Assalamualaikum